We've got a lot of intrigue in this matchup, a lot of drama even perhaps, as Baker Mayfield will make his return to face his former team. Remember, he was a walk-on at Texas Tech as a freshman in 2013. One Big 12 Offensive Freshman of the Year, went 5-2 as a starter, but citing some lack of communication with Cliff Kingsbury and some uncertainty about when, if at all, he would receive a scholarship, he ends up transferring to Oklahoma. He enrolls in Oklahoma without a call to the coaching staff, without a scholarship to his name, but he wins the starting job over for Trevor Knight in fall camp. He earns himself a scholarship, and he has been dynamite as the starting QB. Only Josh Heupel has had a more productive first six games at quarterback in Oklahoma history, but there may be some bad blood, Olivia Harlan. His father, James, went as far as to say Cliff Kingsbury is a scoundrel. That's harsh words right there. Yeah, Adam, and a lot of talk this week if Baker Mayfield has a score to settle with Cliff Kingsbury. They didn't talk before the game, which is not unusual, and Kingsbury told me if when they do talk, it's awkward not on him so offensive coordinator for Oklahoma Lincoln Riley said that he understands he's a former Texas Tech player and coach early in the week he tried to squash any potential drama by pulling Baker aside and telling him look it's personal for a lot of us don't try too hard don't do too much and Baker thinks he doesn't do as well when he does too much he told head coach Bob Stoops he couldn't try any harder anyways if he wanted but Kelly you know the mindset of a quarterback and Baker says it's human nature to try to get revenge yeah, Olivia, Adam, I don't care what we've been told. This isn't just another game for Baker Mayfield right. here today. The thing that he has to do, though, is he has to harness those emotions. At the quarterback position, the one place on the field you can't be overly emotional, it affects your decision making and also your accuracy in throwing the football. And I thought we saw this against Texas earlier. Yeah. Mayfield did not play well early in that game. He has to harness those emotions early in this one. That's the only blemish on Oklahoma's resume so far this season. They come in at 2-1 and one in Big 12 play. Texas Tech is 2-2. Two and two. We've got that headlining game in the Big 12 this week. We're ready to go. The Sooner Scooter is too. We'll see you on the other side for kickoff. the college football playoff. Only twice has Texas Tech won in Norman in the Big 12 era. They are 2-8 and eight in Norman in Big 12 play. They won in 96 and they won in 2011 when Tommy Tuberville's Red Raiders beat number three Oklahoma. Cliff Kingsbury's looking for his first road win against the top 25 team today in his third season as the head coach. And as we welcome in the ESPN2 audience for Oklahoma, Texas Tech as well, you look at Bob Stoops, 93-8 and eight here at Memorial Stadium in Norman, Oklahoma, and they have won big more often than not. However, they lost three times for the first time under Bob Stoops at home a season ago. The FPI is a great predictor of future performance as the season goes on. Baylor killing it, TCU killing it, Bama's up there, and believe it or not, the Oklahoma Sooners have the number four FPI in college football. They won the toss to defer. Texas Tech will start off what we expect to be a high-scoring shootout. Nick Hodgson bangs it out of the back of the end zone. And it will be Patrick Mahomes, third of the country in passing so far this season. Four career 400-yard games for just a sophomore out of White House, Texas. And he says his left knee is the healthiest it has felt since that TCU game where it got banged up. And Patrick Mahomes is making such good decisions this far in the season and he also distributes the football for a growing cast of characters at that wide receiver position 10 different receivers have a touchdown reception this season for a high octane Texas Tech offense averaging 49 points a game, third of the country behind Baylor and TCU, their Big 12 brethren. Four receivers to start the day for Mahomes. And a four-man twist for Oklahoma. Mahomes, a back shoulder throw. It is incomplete. Zach Sanchez, very good corner with good coverage on Reggie Davis as we look at our impact players. We talked about the balance so far for this offense. Hakeem Grant and also Washington, they run the ball so well in this new air raid style. And then Stryker is the guy that's going to move around. He's the pressure guy. And then Parker is going to be very important at that safety position, both in coverage and forcing the line of scrimmage. For the top pass defense in the Big 12. And there is Stryker, who has helped out the rush attack cause, the rushing cause, 21 sacks as a team for Oklahoma this year, as it does look like Sanchez 
who is an outstanding cornerback who was going up with Reggie Davis on the first pass of the game went down very hard and he's got teammates surrounding him right now and he looks to be in some pain. Redshirt Jr. out of Fort Worth, Texas, making his 33rd consecutive start in his career. An all Big 12 defensive back. Intended to by this training staff. This was the first play of the game. Sanchez and Davis going up. Well, and you wonder maybe if he just landed awkwardly on that right leg. Yeah, that's what it looked like. Somewhat the uh, kind of back shoulder throw, and Sanchez does such a nice job and not panicking a lot of defensive backs will panic when they have their back to the football but when the football gets in the neighborhood play the ball in the hands of the receiver and Sanchez does such a fine job right there just four seconds in and we have to step aside as the training staff continues to tend to Sanchez you're watching ESPN college football on ABC presented by K Jewelers Just moments ago, Zach Sanchez, the redshirt junior, he of 11 career interceptions, fifth among active players, had to be wheeled off the field, tending to his right leg. Even Cliff Kingsbury went over and shook the hand of the starting cornerback for Oklahoma. So Dakota Austin, who has one pick in his career, the junior out of Lancaster, Texas, 27, towards the top of your screen, is into the game. They're already without Marcus Green, who's injured a backup corner. This is a pitch to the outside for DeAndre Washington on second down, and Will Johnson chops him down after a solid gain of six yards to set up a third down and make a And a little bit of a speed option that time by Patrick Mahomes just gets the ball and attacks the end man on the line of scrimmage. Texas Tech likes to do that with that too high safety look that they'll get at times out of Oklahoma here this afternoon. They'll spread it out on third and four. One of the best third down offenses in college football, facing a four-man rush. Mahomes, as he often does, extending the play with his feet and striking over the middle for Ian Sadler in his first game back after missing three, but he got the ball jarred loose by Ahmad Thomas, the junior out of Miami, with a crunching hit to jar it loose and set up fourth down. And Mahomes tries to get outside the pocket, but Oklahoma's gonna try to prevent that, but you're right. It was about Thomas breaking on the ball and Breaking that play out before it could get started. That was a nice defensive play early by Oklahoma. Sadler, who had missed the last three games with a knee injury, is actually back earlier than scheduled from that injury, but could not corral that ball. For those wondering, he did not complete the process of the catch and make a football move upfield. That's why it's an incompletion. And Michael Barden, who had to punt late in last week's game against Kansas due to a hamstring issue for Taylor Samank, is going to punt the football, and there's a penalty marker thrown back at the 35. Five yard penalty, fourth down. Delay of game as the play clock was winding down. They took a long time trying to figure out whether or not they wanted to go for it or punt it. At least getting the punt unit on took some time for Cliff Kingsbury. On that last play, we saw what Oklahoma is going to try to do with Mahomes. They want him to be in the pocket. His big plays come when he gets off script and, and extends the play a little bit. So you saw a little bit of spying on Texas Tech quarterback right there. So Barden will kick to Sterling Shepard. A tremendous athlete, but Barden with a booming kick. Shepard runs back to the 24 and he raised his arm. He wanted to run it, but he did raise his arm up above his shoulder, so it's an official fair catch at the 24-yard line on a very good 50-yard punt to flip the field for Michael Barden. And Oklahoma's offense will see the field for the first time less than a minute in. And this was probably the headline of the week for this game. The former Texas Tech walk-on quarterback who went 5-2 and two as a starter in 2013 was Big 12 Offensive Freshman of the Year. Baker Mayfield, who's been great so far this season for Oklahoma. And I think a great college football story. And what Baker Mayfield has done is he's brought the swagger back to this Sooner offense. That's what we've seen so far this season. The new air raid offense with former Texas Tech assistant Lincoln Riley putting up some big time points. 40 a game. And this is a give to Samaj P. Ryan who's looking to have a bust out game today and his first touch takes him out near the 44 yard line. Nigel Bethel jarred him out after a 20 yard run. And Texas Tech really isn't defending anything well thus far this year, but they're giving up 264 on the ground. Look for Oklahoma to take advantage of that. Last 
in the Big 12 in rushing defense. First pass of the day for Mayfield had a little bit too much heat on it as he was trying to find D.D. Westbrook. Second down. You talked about Lincoln Riley coming in here and installing the air raid offense just like he did at East Carolina, and it's taking some time because of what's happening up front. They're young and experienced at about three positions up front, but as the offensive line plays better, I look for this offense to explode the second half of the season. Mayfield with a collapsing pocket trying to stay on his feet and it'll work past the line of scrimmage for a very short game. Brandon Jackson on the tackle officially. Mayfield getting into it a little bit after the play as we look at our impacts. And we talked about that for OU. It's their young tackles. Brown and Samia outside and those bookends have to play well in the run game in particular than Robinson and Johnson. One represents the disruptive element and Johnson is that safety. He has to erase mistakes on the back end. He had a pick last week to seal the deal a pick six against Kansas to win it 30 to 20 for Texas Tech. Third down and 10. Zone read and a little bit of an issue on the mesh point. Robertson diving towards the football as Mayfield landed back on top of it and a rough start after that 20 yard run by Pirine to get a first down. Uh, first down and out for Oklahoma's offense. Well, we talked about the fact that Mayfield is going to be jacked up today. We, we know that history and the decision making and the accuracy, we already saw a high hard one when he threw the football and that decision right there, not knowing whether he was gonna give it or keep it to Pirine, the ball went on the ground. So it is Austin Seibert, the only true freshman that is handling both place kicking and punting duties in the country. He's been very good, punting with the wind. And a fair catch single by Cam Batson with that wind carries the ball over his head into the end zone. And it is a net punt of just 37 yards. For those of you in the Oklahoma area, in the state of Oklahoma, in the Oklahoma City area, uh, some tragic news earlier today in Stillwater. This was before our game during the pregame here in Norman, Oklahoma. A moment of silence. All the fans so respectful about what was happening in Stillwater today during their homecoming parade. A car crash that took the lives of three, wounded several others. Just 67 miles away in Stillwater, Oklahoma. There have been charges applied to the uh, driver of a vehicle that caused a crash in Stillwater today. Our thoughts, our condolences out to everybody involved with that today. Classy move by those here in Norman to give a moment of silence to the victims today in Stillwater. Our best to them as well. Mahomes back to work from the 20-yard line against pressure. Going a low one to the outside for Jakeem Grant, his top receiver. It is incomplete, and it brings up second down and 10. Third highest scoring offense in the country, but they weren't happy with just the 30 last week. There wasn't a lot of urgency for this offense last week, he said. And Adam, particularly in the red zone, I mean, that's sometimes where the air raid has an issue is when they get into the red zone, they don't run it well, and the field is condensed, and the urgency was truly seen, the lack thereof, in the red zone a week ago. Has seven trips, only two touchdowns against Kansas. That's why it's only a 10-point win. Mahomes with a good pocket, strikes for a first down across the 30-yard line to Reggie Davis in front of Dakota Austin, who's taking the spot of the now-injured Zach Sanchez, a gain of 11. Yeah, and make no mistake about it, we see Texas Tech is going to go fast again, but there are a lot of weapons out there for Mahomes to use here today. Swing it out, extension of the long game to Davis, and Austin gets him by the ankles after a short pickup. There is a penalty marker thrown from the near side of the field at the 30. Kind of a herky-jerky start to our I'm game today. I'm not sure everyone got set for Texas Tech that time. Mike DeFee is our official. Power the snap. Ball start. Offense. Not everyone got set. Five yard penalty. Second down. Kelly, you nailed it. You see Cliff Kingsbury down to Olivia for more. Adam, you're talking about the game at Kansas last week. Cliff Kingsbury didn't like it starting at warm-ups. I asked him why. He said the crowd was sparse. It was early in the day, and he could tell that it was a coach-driven game. It would not take care of itself. Today, he said, this crowd and this time and the hype, it'll take care of itself. Interesting, with Mahomes at quarterback living on that hype, while Mayfield on the other side has to control himself with it. Mahomes off his back foot. Throwing under pressure, and it's second down and 15. Good pressure by Charles Walker, the redshirt sophomore who had a sack last week against Kansas State, the 55-0 win. I think what the officials are discussing right here is whether there was a receiver in the area, and I think the receiver actually was in the flat and then turned it up 
the sideline late. And so it looked like nobody was there, but I think when Mahomes first looked out there, there was a receiver that was just starting to turn. It was Reggie Davis who would be the closest man to it. Well, and now they throw the flag. Wow. So it's a loss of yardage, and it'll be second and long coming up here. It's interesting in the air raid because, go ahead and let it roll, guys. A lot of times there are adjustments on routes. And right there you see the double move. And at the time the quarterback Mahomes is throwing it, he doesn't know where the receiver is setting or going. So I don't know that I agree with that call right there at all. So they go back to the ground and DeAndre Washington with another penalty marker thrown as he inches forward for about three into Walker. The third early penalty on Texas Tech. That was one of their areas last year that they wanted to clean up. Very highly penalized in 2014. And they've slimmed it down to about 63 yards per game now in penalties. That's mid-pack in the Big 12. And this is a very awkward start to this game on both sides. It's going to be a personal foul against Texas Tech. Personal foul. A. Smith. Offense 51. Penalties declined. Third down. There are four returning starters on the offensive line for Texas Tech. Very good ones. The only non-returning starter is Tony Morales, who is a scout team guy his entire career. They've had to fill that spot in this year. And it's third down and 21. The sophomore out of White House, Texas, who threw for four touchdowns against Oklahoma last year, faces a four-man rush. Trying to get out of a collapsing pocket, and he gets ripped down by the ankles. Closed out by Jordan Wade. Well, the reason Oklahoma is playing such good defense, at least statistically through this part of the year, is because of this. When they can get you into a passing situation, they have the horses up front that can get pressure on the quarterback. Stryker was actually the one that chased Mahomes up in the pocket, and then there was someone there to clean it up. So Barden will punt into the wind with Shepard back to return. And the ball just dies up in the wind. Takes a decent Texas Tech bounce inside the 40 to the 38-yard line, but decent field position coming up here for Oklahoma. In 1890, they established this place. It's a beauty. ESPN's College Football on ABC, presented by K Jewelers, who would like to remind you that right now it's engagement season. Chevrolet, find new roads. And Dr. Pepper, Dr. Pepper and College Football. It's a one-of-a-kind tradition. The Palace on the Prairie opened in 1923 in the midst of renovations right now to make it a better fan experience and better for the Oklahoma football team. And one of the newest additions to the staff is Lincoln Riley, the 32-year-old offensive coordinator at Oklahoma, 18 years old when he was a walk-on quarterback at Texas Tech under Mike Leach, has turned into one of the dynamite young offensive coordinators in college football, very much in the Cliff Kingsbury role. Baker Mayfield will keep it. And Baker Mayfield with a very good run for a first down into Texas Tech territory. Taken down by Nigel Bethel after a 13-yard run. And Lincoln Riley, you see him at Texas Tech, seven years on staff. Mike Leach told the third-generation quarterback that he actually lacked the talent to really be an Ouch. impact player, but he recognized his intelligence and said, you need to go into coaching. And he's put up some big numbers in his stops. Mayfield under pressure, setting it up for Pirine. And P. Ryan putting a big shoulder into Micah Howey and getting close to the sticks. It'll be about a yard shy. Really good decision by Mayfield. You talked about it. The pressure was brought on by Robertson. We talked about him at the top and then a good dump off to his check down receiver and P. Ryan. Right back to Samaja between the tackles where Texas Tech has been very leaky against the run. P. Ryan trying to get going inside the tackles. He picks up five yards. The quickest to 2,000 yards in terms of rushes in the Bob Stoops era at Oklahoma. 
That's up there with names like DeMarco Murray and Adrian Peterson. On first down, off play action, Mayfield with the pressure coming. And Mayfield cannot keep his feet. He's brought down by Robertson. The play action passing game is on the table because of the early success in the run game. And Mayfield, if he had a chance right there to throw the ball away, certainly he should have done that. There was actually a receiver right over the middle open early, and Mayfield was just being forced to scramble out of the pocket at that time and so could not put the ball on it. Mayfield developed his scrambling ability last year while running the scouts team. He's an athletic guy who swings it out to the left side for Joe Mixon. And Mixon takes it to the 32-yard line. It'll still be third down and about seven here. Mixon is an explosive athlete. You can see that. He's 6'1", 200, and almost 20 pounds. And he has a little more giddy-up than P. Ryan does. P. Ryan's more of a downhill guy and he kind of wears on you, and the versatility of Mixon is one of the things that Lincoln Riley is trying to find out how to use. And Mixon had a very good game against K-State last week, a touchdown on the ground and a touchdown through the air. Oklahoma trying to improve itself on third down, just 40% this season converted. Here is Piran. We said this could be the breakout game for Piran, who's still trying to find his identity in this offense. He picks up nine in the first down. And this is where Piran is at his best. He absolutely gets downhill in a heartbeat, and he's a very physical runner at 230 pounds. One of the best freshmen in the country last year, getting the fake. Mayfield to the sideline, and an extended arm catch by Deron Neal for a first down of the 11-yard line. Senior out of St. Louis in front of Justice Nelson making the grab. And now a little bit of timing and rhythm and tempo to the Oklahoma offense. D.D. Westbrook at the top of the formation by himself. Here's Mixon. In a cup. Joe Mixon gets Oklahoma on the board first. Joe Mixon away from the team the entirety of 2014 due to a misdemeanor assault charge but participated in the spring. Bob Stoops had to defend his decision to bring Mixon back, but back to back weeks. Mixon with a touchdown on the ground. The redshirt freshman gets Oklahoma on the board first, and Austin Seibert puts him up 7 0. Adam, the best defense by Oklahoma today might be a very physical run game. Mixon pays this off. P. Ryan is actually the guy that got a great block. But look for a physical run game here this afternoon. Welcome back to ESPN College Football on ABC. Presented by K Jewelers. Saturday Night Football presented by Walmart on ABC tonight in the birthplace of college football. Rutgers gets set to host the number one team for the first time in 13 years. Number one Ohio State will have JT Barrett at quarterback as the starter tonight. Saturday Night Football presented by Walmart on ABC at 8 o'clock Eastern and also available on Watch ESPN. Rutgers big comeback against Indiana last week. Ohio State looked very good against Penn State a week ago. Here comes Jakeem Grant. Explosive, dangerous kick returner trying to find a seam, but he takes it out to the 21 yard line. Samaj so Piran could have a big game today. Yeah, I think Oklahoma really likes their matchup up front. Piran is more of the physical pounder, and Mixon is an explosive guy. He's a big back, but a little more burst. But Piran gets a great block on that play as well, an all around player. But Oklahoma's best defense to today, Adam, might be them pounding the rock and keeping Texas Tech on the sideline. So far, just eight plays for Texas Tech, four passes, four runs, and not much doing. Empty set, DeAndre Washington, part of the four receiver set to the left. They go to the one receiver side, and Reggie Davis gets chopped down by Dakota Austin, who my guess is is going to be tested a lot today with him coming in for the injured Sanchez. Yeah, that's not by accident. There's no doubt about it. They're going to put Grant over there on 27, put three receivers away from him, and see if 27 Austin can cover somebody. Swing out to the left side this time, and Cameron Batson gets blown up. 
Will Johnson. One of the nickelbacks on this team. He's kind of stepped into the main nickelback the last couple of weeks with a loss of six on the play. Yeah. But Stoops really likes Stephen Parker at the nickelback position, but Parker is better at the safety position and kind of directing people in space. But Johnson made a nice play at the nickelback right there. Another third and long for Texas Tech, emptying it out. They rush four. Mahomes over the middle, soft spot in the zone, and Ian Sadler has the catch for a first down. His first catch in about a month, taking it out to the 40-yard line. And I think the linebacker, Frank Shannon, watch number 20 run out of there. It's kind of a tamper, too, but you don't have anyone to hunt down the middle of the field, so you have to settle down, and Sadler would have ran right into your lap, and Shannon just kind of ran out of that void in the zone. Another throw that gets intercepted. Striker at the line of scrimmage. Mahomes trying to bring him down. First and goal, Oklahoma. First career pick, Eric Stryker. One of the premier defensive players in college football is Eric Stryker. Yeah, he's really the linchpin. He's standing up right here, and he's the matchup issue that most teams have. An athletic catch the football after you bat the ball and then take it clear down to the two-yard line, fighting with the quarterback a bit. But what Mike Stoops likes to do with 19, Stryker, is use him as a guy that you can move around, and he really creates such versatility in the defensive scheme because he can be an edge rusher like he was going to be right there, or he can drop into coverage like we've already seen him do today as well. But what an athletic play right there by Stryker. And now he sets up Baker Mayfield to try to take a two-score lead. He ran the deep end. So now J. P. Ryan getting stacked up, but staying on his feet. What an effort, Samaje P. Ryan for an Oklahoma touchdown. My goodness. Stryker set it up. Piran cashes in. Well, we were told that Piran's not flashy, but he wears on you. This is what wearing on you looks like in a football game. Three broken tackles. They don't get him to the ground, and he was still standing up in the end zone. Texas Tech, which has been so good at turnover margin this season, plus six coming into the game. But Patrick Mahomes with a big mistake, just his fourth pick all season, the first of the long career for Eric Stryker. The 33-yard return set up the two-yard touchdown, and it's 14-0 Sooners. When Eric Stryker was in ninth grade, he told his high school coach, Sean Callahan, he wanted to play wide receiver at Oklahoma. The very next day, his high school coach moved him to defense. He hasn't left the defensive side of the ball since, but he always had the good hands. He wanted to make a catch at Oklahoma. He just made the first of his career a kick to set up an Oklahoma touchdown. And Nick Hodgson has been very good in his career, banging out touchbacks, forces Grant to take a knee. What a play by Stryker. Well, Adam, take a look at this. Balin Brown is the tackle right here, and he actually should attack Stryker on a short throw by the quarterback. The quarterback does not know that Stryker's there and is going to jump, but the, the right tackle has to attack the knees of Stryker and get his hands down, and he didn't do it right there, and so Stryker was left alone to make that play. That goes on the offensive right Tackle. No offers from Florida or Florida State or Oklahoma for the Tampa native, but his high school coach called Brett Venables, the former defensive coordinator at Oklahoma, said you got to get this kid. 36 hours later, they offered Eric Stryker. A minute 40 to take a 14-0 lead. Can Mahomes and this explosive offense get going? There is Grant with the catch, but he gets knocked down in the open field by Stephen Parker going from nickel to strong safety. Adam, did you see the way Parker attacked that tackle right there? That is exactly what Stoops likes about him. They would like him closer to the line of scrimmage, but he's also a very intelligent guy at safety that can direct people in the spacing of this offense that they're going to see from Texas Tech. He has seven by Grant, one of the best receivers in the Big 12 to make it second and three. 
Designed run for Mahomes, man, is he slippery. He gets the first down on a game of five, running into Dominique Alexander, one of the outside linebackers for Oklahoma. Mahomes is a big athlete, 6'3", yeah. 220 pounds. He's, he's referred to as athletic, but not fast. And that's what you need on those quarterback draws. Just be a little bit slippery and have an efficient play. They can use Grant in different ways. He motioned out to the left. Again, they throw in front of Austin on the far side of the field for Reggie Davis. But he can't really get some traction, so he only picks up three. Remember, Zach Sanchez is out for this game. He was on crutches on the sideline and in a boot. So that right leg injury seemingly is a little bit serious for Zach Sanchez. Well, Texas Tech is going to go three by one and put it Austin on an island against whatever receiver they choose and that's what they've done about three times since austin's been in the game they've done it again on that far side of the field but here is the one trying to pick up yardage is washington and he's got the first down to the 48 yard line oklahoma's defense already banged up no Devonte bond for the third consecutive game no jordan evans one of their inside linebackers so frank shannon 20 in crimson is starting for the first time since the sugar bowl a couple years ago over the top, a leaping catch by Kiki QT. His ninth career catch for the true freshman out of Texas, 23 yards. And this is a new look out of the air raid. Kind of the play action, slight boot. The throw to QT right there. And we won't see this out of Mike Leach at Washington State, but it's kind of the new era of air raid that we'll see here today. Oklahoma's got 12 on the field. They finally get their numbers right. And it's first and 10 for the 29 for the Red Raiders. And that play nearly blown up, but a great decision by Mahomes to keep it. As he saw the crashing Frank Shannon coming in, Mahomes takes it himself. Well, this is the ultimate in the quarterback's own read. He gives that ball up. It's dead on arrival, but Mahomes pulls it at the last second and makes a positive play out of what was going to be a negative one. Charles Tapper was about to crush Washington. Second down six. Only four to play in this opening quarter. But we expect it to be a high-scoring game. Washington going to shift, and he runs into Shannon. It'll set up third down and short. Shannon making his 16th career start, but he had not made a start since the Sugar Bowl against Alabama on January the 2nd, 2014. University suspension had him on the sidelines for the entirety of 2014. Third down and two. Zone read. And Tapper came flying in at Washington, but it looked like he may have had enough for the first down. Make that Romar flying in to try to make the stop. Pass the stick should be good enough for a first down, and it is. And Oklahoma defensively will kind of morph in and out of a three-man line and a four-man line. And in that three-man look, they want to get up there quickly. You see Mahomes split out right here in the Wildcat type of look. It is Stockton, Justin so Stockton, the sophomore. Running it left with a block from Washington, and he gets the edge. Tiptoeing near the sideline, stepped, sh stepped out shy of the line to gain. But it's a good run to the 10. This is a very good way to get your playmakers a football. Change of pace type of back is Stockton and very well blocked out on the edge. Oklahoma looked like they weren't fooled, had it defended well, but it was better blocked by Texas Tech. His nickname is The Flash. Over 6,000 rushing yards in his high school career in the great football state of Texas. Mahomes back in. And some confusion here for Oklahoma substituting on defense. First time out of the half. 30 seconds in direction. We'll step aside. A cornucopia, a plethora of games on the ESPN networks, which you can watch all of all day on this college football Saturday. Watch ESPN.com. You can download the Watch ESPN app, stream any game live while you're on the go today. Later on tonight, Texas A&M taking on Ole Miss right, in prime time on ESPN. We talked about the urgency. Cliff Kingsbury talked about they lacked it last week. Two touchdowns in seven trips to the red zone last week against Kansas. Second down and two from the 10-yard line here. 
It's a give to Stockton. Trying to push that pile and hold on to the football as Tapper drills him to the ground. But it's good for a first down. First and goal, Texas Tech. This is one of the things that you see out of Texas Tech that you really haven't seen out of the air raid in the past is the ability to finish with the run. They didn't do it efficiently last week, but they are a better running team than they've ever been this year. They've scored a touchdown on three out of every five trips on the season. But again, only two of seven last week in the red zone. Washington getting the fake. It's Mahomes trying to pound his way in. And it's Jordan Thomas who stacked him up shy of the goal line. And on Adam, on this drive, it, I think that's the eighth run and only three passes. And the new kind of era of air raid. You won't see Mike Le Leach doing this, but you certainly see the guys doing it today. Well, that's a bounding ball, but it was a forward pass incomplete into the hands of Reggie Davis. Looked like a shortstop there for the former high school draft pick as a pitcher, Mahomes. About another foot backwards, and Davis could have ran that yeah, one in. Yeah. I was thinking that's a lateral pass. Yeah, maybe they ought to put that in the playbook. <laughs> Skip one out there. I don't think it's on that play sheet for Cliff Kingsbury as he sets up for third and goal. Going to call a timeout first to think about it, yep. I think, Adam. Again, this was a huge issue last week for Texas Tech. These are opportunities that you cannot let go in a game like this where possessions may be numerous but crucial for two high-scoring teams. Well, you know what's interesting is the, the air raid thought process is about spreading things as much as you can go horizontally go vertically and when the field condenses some of these teams have trouble finishing but the Texas Tech is running the football more effectively than they have in a long while and so they should be better at finishing drives you know you talked about the air raid with Mike Leach you have Lincoln Riley who's a son of a Cliff Kingsbury as well it all started with Hal Mummy when he would go talk with Lavelle Edwards he'd visit him every spring to learn about the offensive minutia that Lavelle picked up looking at NFL coaches so Mummy does it then Mike Leach takes it to multiple schools after being under Mummy all these guys you know Art Bryles, Dana Holgerson, Sonny Dykes running the air raid and now the third generation of Kingsbury, Sonny Cumbie and Lincoln Riley all stemming from the same system, trying to score a lot of points. Third down and goal, and the rush will not get there for Washington. Charles Tapper makes another big stop, and it's decision time early on fourth and goal. Down early, Kingsbury has to go for it right here. He's on the road. You don't want it to snowball out of control, so I think his offense is going to try to get this one in the end zone. Big early play here in the first. It's a fake, Mahomes dumps it off for Pearson. First catch of the season, first career touchdown, but there is a penalty marker thrown on the play. I think this is gonna be a late hit on the quarterback. There was just kind of a shove on Mahomes out on the edge late after he threw that football. That's where you see the, the true triple option up inside, get it to the outside, and it's a run pass option when the quarterback gets out there. Pass interference. Offense. Wow. Woo. It's Reggie Davis, the redshirt junior, getting tagged for a pass interference. And Pearson has his first career touchdown scratched off the board. We'll see the pick clear out wise, freeze it right there. And it's gonna be the pick that's coming in there, I believe is the one that was called. Actually, I think it was back up inside. When he was grabbing on uh, Austin there. There was a whole lot going on out there to be quite honest with you, but Mahomes had the right play, the right decision, unfortunate by Davis. So they'll have to go for a field goal and it will be the redshirt freshman Clayton Hatfield, who had his first career miss from 48 last week against Kansas, kicking into the wind from 35. And able to curl it through. He's now 7 of 8 on the season. So Texas Tech gets points on the play. The pass interference negates the touchdown.
We're going to try to see where we can see that pick. Stop it right there. It actually happened on the tight end inside. Guys, if we could go back to that once again, I think the officials just called the wrong number. Yeah, I think they... it was on Ian Sadler coming in. Right there. Yeah, it was 12 instead of yeah, two. It was Sadler. It was 12 instead of two. But yeah, you simply just have to sell that route. Right here is Sadler. He's going to come in and block. Go ahead and let it roll. And you have to freeze it right there. You have to act as if you're just kind of casually running into the guy as you run your route. And he just went and threw a shoulder. That is an easy call for the officiating crew. It's a good look at it, guys. He had a hard time sorting it out initially because the flag came out late. They called number two, and they threw the flag clear out wide. That took place clear back inside on Sadler number 12. So Cliff Kingsbury, again, urgency in the red zone, trying to convert. They had struggles with it last week, and they end up having to settle for a field goal and actually get taken out of the red zone due to that penalty. And Adams, that's just not understanding the purpose of the route. You can accomplish the same thing Sadler could by just running your route and redirecting the defender. You don't, you don't have to lower his shoulder. That's an easy call for the official right there. So Hatfield kicks away into the wind, and it will die in that wind and give Alex Ross an opportunity to return it. Oklahoma's kick return unit hasn't been all that great, but Ross out to the 23-yard line. Lincoln Riley, the offensive coordinator, his offense back to work, Olivia. Yeah, and everyone under Mike Leach on this field today, we had to ask about the story or the myth about the simple eight-play call sheet on an index card that Leach had. Lincoln Riley laughed and said, oh, that story got a little bit exaggerated. This is what they actually used. He folded this sheet of paper before the game for me. And it's just special plays, red zone, open field, goal line. And the thing is, with this offense going so fast, they have to keep it relatively simple. Funny thing, Cliff Kingsbury showed me his play sheet in exact copy. Incredible, right? Air raid minds think alike. Here is Mixon on first down with a big run, putting it back to the inside where Texas Tech has been very leaky this year. Takes it out to the 39-yard line, and he was whistled dead. Mixon explodes forward, but he was whistled dead back near the 40-yard line. You know, Lincoln Riley, first-year offensive coordinator at Oklahoma, we talked about the method to his madness, and this is what the play sheet has. Olivia showed you the sections. These are the sections that he has on his play sheet, and that's it. It sounds simple, but that's it. Just like Mike Leach, right? They're yeah. all they're all doing that. I'm kind of disappointed it wasn't an index card. Though. <laughs> the myth is maybe a little bit more impressive than, than the reality. Here's Deron Neal taking it out to the 47-yard line. Pick up of eight yards on the play. And Adam, what we're seeing out of Oklahoma offensively right now is when the offensive line gets up to speed, this offense is fixing to break loose, and we're seeing the running game, and then the screen game comes, and all of the concepts in the pass game as well. Same play. Neal on the screen and he fights for the first down into Texas Tech territory despite Justice Nelson grabbing onto his ankle. And it's about the rhythm and the execution. You can't go fast if you don't execute and stay on the field. And right now, Oklahoma's executing at a high level, so therefore they can put the pedal to the metal. Yeah, they're averaging seven a play so far on their 16 offensive snaps. If he steps to the quarterback, you give it to P. Ryan like Mayfield did right there. Five carries, 57 yards for Samaj P. Ryan so far. Here is carry number six, right back between the tackles, and a lot of solid first down yardage there. Samaj P. Ryan doing the work. He's got a rushing touchdown. Joe Mixon has a rushing touchdown. And Baker Mayfield facing his former team. Maybe a little bit of bad blood there. He was a little hyped up early, but he's found a rhythm. Eric Stryker had the big play, an interception to set up a score. 14 to three, ESPN College Football continues after this message and a word from our ABC stations.
I'm Robert Flores with his Taco Bell studio update. Arkansas 0-2 in overtime games before today. Josh Lindell breaking up this Auburn pass in quadruple overtime. Hogs win 54-46. Guys, back to you in beautiful Norman, Oklahoma. Roflo, thanks very much. Remember, Texas Tech beat Brett Bielema's Arkansas Razorbacks this year, 35-24. A little bit of shade thrown both ways before and after the game. And that was one of five Texas Tech victories. They're coming off a 30-20 win over Kansas. Oklahoma's lone blemish in six games is the loss to Texas. Baker Mayfield taking off. And you see the shifty juking to the 20-yard line to set up third down manageable with Dakota Allen on the stop. That quarterback draw actually looked like it was by design, kind of a shoulder and head fake outside to the pass, and then he gets right down Broadway. But I think Oklahoma really likes their matchup up front currently. Their offensive line is playing extremely well. Texas Tech again, leaky in between the tackles against the rush. 185 yards a game between the tackles allowed. Here is Mixon. And he gets grabbed at the ankles by Gaines. And Mixon trying to stretch to the line to gain. It'll be close here, depending on the spot. Gaines did a nice job of knifing through. D.D. Westbrook was a wide receiver that was supposed to get a hat in front of number three, J.J. Gaines. But Gaines had too much speed to the point of attack. They do mark it short. And about three quarters of a yard, according to our unofficial line. P. Ryan is back in the game. Mayfield looks like he could be ready for a sneak. Big play here, and Mayfield is able to convert, diving ahead for the first down. Over the top, already the play ruled dead, and he had the first down. And Mayfield has got into it more than once, staring across the field at some of the Red Raider defenders. Yeah, no doubt about that. He's an excitable guy anyway, but this means a lot to him. But I guarantee you he's comforted by the way his offensive line is playing. They're getting a very good push like they did in that short yardage play, but they protected him well, and they're running the football extremely well also. Averaging about eight yards a carry in the run game in the first quarter. Mixon breaks a tackle in the backfield, and Joe Mixon with a head of steam spinning to the end zone. Touchdown, Oklahoma. touchdowns today as he had in his first five and six games and Mixon is more of an explosive guy because of that right there you saw an untouched defender in the middle of the field right standing in the hole and it was a little juke and then by him does Mixon go and gets into the end zone and Mixon has a little more versatility and explosiveness and then you bring in P Ryan that just wears people out Cyber adds the extra point and makes it an 18 point game Oklahoma is tied at season high with three rushing touchdowns, and Baker Mayfield is fired up. The 217-pound redshirt freshman, West Coast, Oakley, California, representing. Breaking a tackle, staying on his feet. Two scores on the ground for Mixon. You're watching ESPN College Football on ABC. Presented by K Jewelers. Oklahoma up early on Texas Tech. They still have Baylor and TCU and Oklahoma State in what is going to be truly an eliminator in the Big 12 in the month of November as all four of those teams, Oklahoma, Oklahoma State, Baylor, TCU, all play each other in the month of November. Still a lot of football to play. And a couple of Two Big 12 win teams square out here, all Oklahoma at home early. Into the win, the kick goes into the arms of Jakeem Grant. He's got three career kick returns, four touchdowns, and he's trying to switch fields, and Texas Tech needs a big play from him. Steps out at the 38-yard line. So good field position for Texas Tech, trying to get back into this first half. As we take a look at the bright side, it's brought to you by Carmax. This was the matchup that we looked at. Texas Tech's pass offense against Oklahoma's pass defense. And Oklahoma, I think, is legit in terms of the way they play defense. And they get pressure, and they cover on the back end. And right now, I think Texas Tech just hasn't had enough rolls at the dice. We'll see if they can get it going here in the second quarter. But it's been the run game for Oklahoma that has limited the touches by T. Texas Tech's offense as well. So we'll see how this plays out the rest of the game. Mahomes is 7 of 12 for 67 yards, but he does have that interception to Stryker that helps set up an Oklahoma touchdown. 
I told you, I put that on the right tackle. I don't put that on the quarterback. <laughs> okay. Well, yeah, you said it. Balen Brown kind of whiffed on striker. Mahomes taking a shot downfield, throwing the long out for Devin Waterdale. He was fully recovered from some internal bruising that kept him out of a game against Iowa State a couple of weeks ago. Said how explosive this Texas Tech offense has been and can be. 93 points in the first quarter in the first seven games. That averages out to about two touchdowns per first quarter. Just shy of 14 per quarter. Only three points in that opening frame. As they'll give it to Washington up the middle, got grabbed from behind by Jordan Wade. And it'll set up third down. Yeah, we haven't seen much out of Texas Tech in the run game, and that's exactly the way Mike Stoops coaches defense. Regardless of the opposition, you have to snuff out the run and make any team you play one-dimensional, and thus far Oklahoma's been able to do that with Texas Tech. Third down six. It's the four-man rush. Mahomes is going to take a shot down the field. And it is incomplete. Looking for Grant. And Jordan Thomas, very good sophomore quarterback in coverage. And it's fourth down and six. And Oklahoma had rolled that way. There was a corner up in the flat. And then Jordan Thomas actually playing safety that particular time was over the top of that route going down the sideline. Very well defended. Sterling Shepard back to return. No punt returns for touchdowns in his 25 returns. And Michael Barden is only punting for the fifth time, and he's only punting due to the injury to Taylor Sabank, his hamstring. Punts with the wind over Shepard. And out to the 20. Will come Oklahoma on a net punt of 38 yards. Say what's up to the duck. Aflac. Aflac trivia question. Which two schools hold the top five marks for total offense? in a single season. This is an interesting one. Well, the answer for you in just a bit. Any guesses on this I one? have no idea. I'm going to guess I'm Tulsa. I'm trying to figure out the question before I can even think of an answer. I think top five I, I, marks. the top five marks. For, I'm going to say Tulsa, because I think Tulsa in the past has set a record for offense. And I'm going to guess Texas Tech. I'm going to guess Mike Leach has to be involved. So in two team. schools have all the top five. Yeah, Mike Leach has, has to be, to be in there. There's right? no doubt about that. How well, about Baylor? Is Baylor yeah, maybe I mean, Baylor might be up there, too. Pick anyone in the Big 12. Mayfield back to work from the 20-yard line. Extending the play with his speed, still scrambling, stepping around a couple of defenders, and Mayfield somehow turns it into a gain of about two and a half yards. Had to run about 30 yards to get it. That might be one of the better three-yard runs that you'll <laughs> see out of a quarterback. It's a good spin move right there. And I think the swagger that Mayfield has brought to this offense has been vitally important as Lincoln Riley tries to get the air raid going here. Mayfield, an Oklahoma fan growing up in Austin, Texas, who's a huge Oklahoma fan, spent a lot of his childhood going to games on Saturdays here in Northern. And Mayfield takes a deep shot. And a leaping attempt by Shepard could not hold on to it with Nigel Bethel. The heavily recruited sophomore in coverage, third down and seven. That's one of the times where the quarterback Mayfield just has confidence in Shepard going up and making a play. The double move, kind of a sluggo. The slant and then the go, and it was pretty well defended by Bethel. But I think Shepard would tell you he should have came down with that football. One of the better receivers in the country. Had a groin injury last year that really limited him about halfway through the season. Still almost had 1,000 yards a season to go despite the injury. And he's back and healthy in their leading receiver as expected. Five-man rush, late blitz, and underneath it's D.D. Westbrook for a first down and more. Westbrook, Gaines got him at the ankles and tripped him up, landing at the 45-yard line, a 22-yard third down game. Well, this is a staple of the air raid. It's called a nest route. You have a shallow crosser and a crosser coming from the opposite side. They get kind of shoulder to shoulder, and one guy comes free. In this case, it was Westbrook. It's a man-beating route, and it beat man-to-man -man coverage there. Stretch to the edge for Savage and Piran. Piran with a head of steam puts a big shoulder into games at the Texas Tech 41 yard line. 14 more yards for what has been a very good rushing attack for Oklahoma, and that's something that Bob Stoops wanted to get back into this offense. Lincoln Riley wanted to find the identity for the running backs in Piran and Mixon. 
They've had an identity today. It's big plays. Here's another one through the air. Jarvis Baxter. He lost the football. It's loose near the 20-yard line, and it's picked up. Deshaun Johnson, the ball hawk, with Mayfield in front of him, tripped up inside the 30. Back-to-back -back weeks that Deshaun Johnson has come up with a big play on defense in the turnover game. He takes it 48 yards after Tevin Madison punched the ball loose. Huge Texas Tech play. Yeah, and Texas Tech had him exactly right, was needing a huge play. Baxter slips into the middle of that defense, is running with it, and then it's punched out by Madison and picked up by Johnson. That's the kind of play that Texas Tech really needed at this point in time in the game to try to climb back in this one. Last week, it was Johnson's pick six that sealed the game against Kansas. He comes up with a fumble recovery and a 48-yard return to give Mahomes his best field position. And DeAndre Washington has one of his best runs of the day for eight yards. Deshaun Johnson, who only played four games last year before a medical redshirt after an injury. Big play there. Second down, two. Mahomes over the middle, and it's caught. Pearson, that was the first catch of his season, and he takes it for a first down to the six-yard line. And now Mayfield can only watch as Texas Tech has an opportunity to get right back in this game. Mahomes keeping it. Grabbed by Tapper and driven back. The mark the former progress right at the line of scrimmage. It'll be second down and goal from about the six. And on this series right here is the first time we've really seen Texas Tech really get up tempo. They're going fast because they've been successful. It's been one of the first times they've been able to do this. Again, can they convert in the red zone? They've stopped it in Washington in the backfield from the home. Still plenty of time in the play clock. Extending the play, flag is thrown, throw to the end zone, and it's caught by Davis for a touchdown, but we'll have to check the marker again. And once again, Dakota Austin was in coverage right there on Davis. I think Austin's going to get called for the hold as the receiver Davis was coming out of that break late. Holding defense. The the touchdown. And Texas Tech gets a much, much needed score. That play was a lot about Mahomes keeping it going off script and extending plays. And then Davis finally got loose, even though Dakota Austin, number 27, who we've seen Texas Tech pick on him today, the injury to Zach Sanchez early in the game, four seconds into the game. Hatfield banged through the extra point, and it was Tevin Madison knocking it free, and then Johnson grabbing the fumble. Taking it 48 yards. Madison, the big play, the sophomore out of Alabama. And then the redshirt freshman Johnson taking it. Mahomes finding Davis. Tech needed it. They got it. They're back in it. ESPN's College Football on ABC, presented by K Jewelers, brought to you by Nissan, premier partner of the Heisman Trophy, and AT&T, mobilizing your world. Beautiful campus here in Norman. Adam Amin, Kelly Stauffer, Olivia Harlan, 102nd consecutive sellout at Memorial Stadium. And Oklahoma, with a... 21 to 10 lead on Texas Tech. You see Zach Sanchez, who is in a walking boot right now, right in the middle of the huddle, trying to help out his fellow defensive backs. Dakota Austin got beat for a touchdown for Reggie Davis on that last series in the red zone. That'll be something to watch for as the day goes on. I'm not confident in this at all. Right here. Aflac. What's up, Duck? Uh, Aflac trivia question. Which two schools hold the top five marks for total offense in a single season? Well, Kelly, you did throw it out there as a possibility. You, you said Baylor. I mean, Baylor, right, Texas that's Tech. one of them. Texas Tech's not the other. It's Houston, the yes. So there's a couple of teams. I believe that's our, I believe that, was that an Andre Ware season for Houston right there? If I'm not mistaken. 
Jack Pardee was the head coach, and then 2011, Case Keenum was the quarterback for Houston, right? There's some good guys to have at the helm. First down at 10 with nine, uh, Kelly's stunned right now, shell shot. Nine and a half to go, first half, and here's Sebastian Kupai with another big run and a first down out across the 35. P. Ryan continuing to do big things on the ground, 88 yards, averaging at 11 a carry. First down 10, and P. Ryan with so much space in the middle of the field. Texas Tech continues to give up major chunks of yardage in between the tackles. Piran continues to take advantage. And Mach 1, as far as Mayfield is concerned, get the next play going. Don't give Texas Tech time to recover defensively. Piran again, and this time he gets stopped right near the line of scrimmage. Got tackled by Devontae Hinton, and it's second down. That was more of a pulling type of play. They were pulling him alignment from the left to the right the others that p ryan got going downhill in a hurry were more effective and i think that's his game and i think p ryan's a little bit banged up at the very least it looked like he was grimacing and winching looking back towards the sideline mixon is in the game he is in motion mayfield looking at one receiver and he's intercepted picked up by justice nelson and Nelson takes it in Oklahoma territory and steps out of bounds. It looked like Mayfield was looking at one receiver the entire time, and Nelson read the eyes for his second career interception, the first since the Holiday Bowl in 2013. Yeah, Nelson, number 31, was just a deep corner, staying the deep as the deepest and wide as the widest, and you're exactly right. The quarterback, Mayfield, just stared down the receiver. It was intended to Westbrook, and Westbrook was leaking up the sideline and was covered underneath and over the top from the get-go. That was a bad decision by Mayfield. You can't get greedy. He's been making good decisions up until that throw right there. What did you tell me? When you look long, you look long. And it seemed like he was exactly. looking far too long at Westbrook on that play. It's Nelson coming up with the pick. And now it's first and 10. Texas Tech trying to take advantage of another takeaway. Mahomes dumping it off. Washington keeping his feet. And getting the first down into the red zone again goes Texas Tech. Alexander on the stop. And now Cliff Kingsbury wants to turn up the tempo. Two takeaways today, one turnover as well for Mahomes. He did throw a pick in this game, but they're plus one of the takeaway margin today. Washington spinning. Gets past Stryker. And then a gang tackle by Oklahoma's defense at the 13-yard line will set up second down and three. DeAndre Washington's wheelhouse, Adam, is yards after contact. He breaks so many tackles. He competes so hard for every yard, and typically he's moving the pile forward at the end. Last year, an 1,100-yard season. First Texas Tech running back with 1,000 yards since the other Ricky Williams in 1998. That's what Sports Illustrated called him when they put him on the cover. The other Ricky Williams, the year that Texas is Ricky Williams, was having a monster season. On second down, four-man rush. Mahomes fading towards the corner, and it's out of the reach of Grants. He had Stephen Parker in coverage. It almost feels like, Kelly, that multiple defensive backs for Oklahoma have to play multiple roles. Yeah, they're, they have to be flexible on the back end, and here's one of the most flexible guys in Stephen Parker. He's a safety, but he's also a, a nickel back, and he reco or recovered the best receiver for Texas Tech, Grant, on that play. You see P. Ryan, he was just getting attention on the sideline, as that's a concern now for OU's offense. Texas Tech on offense, big third down and three in the red zone here. Washington, first down. Washington still on his feet, lunging for the end zone, touchdown tech. Yards after contact personified for DeAndre Washington on that drive. Texas Tech takes advantage of the Mayfield pick. A very good job by Mahomes getting to the right play, and Washington pays it off in the end, and I do think that's a touchdown. We'll see whether his knee was down, he extends. I think that's gonna hold up as every scoring play is reviewed, and that was a touchdown, but Mahomes did, did a nice job at the line of scrimmage. 
It was a favorable numbers in the box, and he checks to a run, and it was the right play, and Washington gets downhill and gets in the end zone. Backfield adds the extra point, and Texas Tech is right back in it. They've trailed by as many as 18 in this game. 14 unanswered. And both drives off takeaways. This time it was Justice Nelson with the interception of the return. And then Washington, despite Khalil Houghton all over him, is able to extend and get into the end zone. Cliff Kingsbury likes it. Four-point game. Welcome back to ESPN College Football on ABC. Presented by K Jewelers. New defensive coordinator for Texas Tech is David Gibbs, and he preached takeaways on the last couple of defensive stands for Texas Tech. A couple of takeaways, and the offense with better field position has done something with it. Right back in this game are the Red Raiders. And a touchback. Let's check with Robert Flores back in the studio. All right, Adam, Wells Fargo, let's take a look at who's getting it done. Presented by Wells Fargo, Indiana getting it done at East Lansing. Five play, 94-yard drive. Nate Sutfield or Ricky Jones. Indiana down one. 6.01 left to go in the first half. Indiana giving Michigan State all it could handle. Remember the big lead that they blew last week, a 25-point lead against Rutgers. Rutgers came all the way back to win last week against IU, and they host Ohio State tonight. Right here on ABC. 25-yard line, Mayfield and the Sooners. Former Texas Tech walkout quarterback a couple of years ago. Going up against his former team and coach. That's a game to Joe Mixon, who bounces it to the outside, and Mixon in the open field, upended by Nigel Bethel. We might see a lot of Mixon on this drive. Samaje Pirine, we got to look at him on the last Texas Tech series. Pirine was wincing on Oklahoma's last series, and he was getting tended to on the sideline. out to the sideline by Micah Awe, fifth in the Big 12 in tackles this season, the senior with a stop after a gain of two. And with P. Ryan out, it really is a changeup in the run game because Mixon's more elusive, but also the two-back look that we saw in that last play with Flowers leading almost like a fullback and then Mixon getting in behind him. There is Samaje P. Ryan still on the sideline. Fake to Mixon. Mayfield with plenty of time. Now starting to run out. Throws out the run, and it's caught by Westbrook, but he's grabbed immediately by Nelson and ripped down. Shy of the line to gain. Forward progress will mark it at the 46, so third down and very short, about a yard and a half coming up. And that's something new out of the air raid that we're seeing in this modern-day version is run the football effectively, and then they have a play-action passing game, kind of a boot game out of it as well. We've seen out of both teams running this air raid style. Nixon's got two rushing touchdowns today. P. Ryan has another. That's accounted for the scoring for Oklahoma thus far. Third down and a long one. Nixon, patient running, and he got grabbed at the ankles by Devontae Hinton, but lunged forward for the first down anyway. And once again, we see Flowers in the big back at 6'2", almost 230 pounds, slicing across the formation one way, and then Mixon gets up to the right side and ekes it out as well. And he's a pretty big back himself. CP Ryan back into the game, giving Mixon a blow. Shot position here for Oklahoma from their own 48. to try to take a shot. Mayfield down the middle of first down. Sterling Shepard with a spin. Sterling Shepard still on his feet inside the 20. One of the biggest plays of the day for the Oklahoma offense. Into the red zone they go. And Shepard by himself at the top of the formation here. 
Trying to throw a block as P. Ryan tries to beat Bethel to the edge, and Bethel gets him at the ankles. And Mayfield does a good job. This is the previous catch, and there was pressure off the edge, and Mayfield sees it before the snap and then throws to Shepard in the void right behind where that pressure came from. Those are the things that you have to diagnose as a quarterback before you get the football in your hands. 31 catches for Shepard this season, one of the best receivers in Oklahoma history. Flowers blocking, Pirine gets the carry, and Pirine diving close to the sticks will be marked about a yard shy at the 10 as Awe got him down. It's going to be third down and about a short one yard here. And there's an injured Texas Tech Red Raider on the field. And Adam, we've seen Oklahoma offensively get back to what was working early, a physical downhill run game, and then your pass game's a play-action game off of that. Oklahoma driving, third down and one as this training staff tends to an injured Red Raider. ABC's newest drama, Wicked City, starring Ed Westwick, Erica Christensen, and Jeremy Sisto, premieres Tuesday night, 10 o'clock, 9 central, after Marvel's Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. on ABC. Third down and a short one yard for the Sooners here, deep in Texas Tech territory. Nigel Bethel was the injured Texas Tech Red Raider. Theory Gima takes over at cornerback for him. Samaj P. Ryan has a hole. First and a touchdown, his second of the day. And the rushing attack for the Sooners continues to get it done. Four touchdowns, Oklahoma, all on the ground. Over 200 yards of rushing today here in the first half alone. The right guard, Kasi Tati, is the one that had the really good block, but Adam, that was way too easy. Over 200 yards this half running the football over seven and a half yards a pop. They're only averaging 160 on the year. They have over 200 going into the half. Seibert adds the extra point. And it's back to an 11 point lead for the Sooners. Take a look at today's good hands play. It is brought to you by Allstate. A couple of good hands plays, and it has to do with some of the defense that we've seen so far. How about these hands by Eric Stryker to start it off? First career pick for Eric Stryker in his 46th career game. Madison punching it out, and then Jashawn Johnson scooping it up with some sure hands, taking it down the field to help set up one Texas Tech touchdown, and then this Nelson pick. A junior out of Mesquite, Texas, helps set up another Texas Tech score. Those two takeaways help the Red Raiders get right back into this game oh, yeah. after they trailed by 18 at one point. And that's really why David Gibbs is here. For I Texas mean, Tech? Yeah, for Texas Tech. Is the defensive coordinator, and Cliff Kingsbury told us that. I said, what were you looking for in a defensive coordinator? And he said, I wanted a guy that could take it away and defend the red zone. And at Houston, that's exactly who David Gibbs was. He doesn't really have the personnel right now defensively for Texas Tech, but that's his M.O., and that's where this defense is headed down the road. And David Gibbs spent nine years in the NFL as an assistant coach as well, so that's the practice mantra, take the ball away. And they constantly drill it in the NFL with head coaches. The defensive coordinators. Again, Hodgson kicking into the wind. Grant, a returnable kick from the three-yard line. And Jakeem Grant ripped down in the open field. Excellent play in special teams for Wesley Hoker. Later on tonight, our ESPN College Football doubleheader, number 15 Texas A&M going on the road to take on number 24 Ole Miss, and then maybe a potential playoff team right now is Kevin Hogan, Christian McCaffrey, and number 10 Stanford trying to avoid an upset against Washington, which already knocked off ranked USC earlier in the season. Great doubleheader lined up for you later on tonight. That Ole Miss game, Laramie Tunsil yes. back at tackle going up against Miles Garrett. That's a preview to Sundays to come. That's an NFL matchup right there out on the edge. You don't watch the left tackle or the defensive end whole, a whole lot. If you're watching on your couch, watch left tackle defensive end tonight. Ole Miss, Texas A&M. Mahomes, the pump, and the throw, which is deflected and intercepted. Picked up by Frank Shannon in his first start in nearly two years. Oh, 
And Charles Tapper continues to be a pest on the interior for this Oklahoma defense. He knocked it into the air. That's a good word, word, word for it. Tapper did not get a very good rush. Number 91 out on the edge. Find the quarterback's eyes and get in the throwing lane. Tap it up in the air as Tapper does. And then Shannon picks it off. Tapper's the only guy up front out of a three-man rotation really last year for Oklahoma defensively that came back. Very productive, and he is a pest, like you said. Boy, a couple of interceptions here, and the turnovers are becoming a huge story in this game. The other has been the Oklahoma rushing attack with four touchdowns on the ground. P. Ryan is in the game for the 20. And Samaje P. Ryan going right back between the tackles. Running into Allen after a gain of about four. You know, Adam, a lot of times the offense in that quick quick change offense would like to throw it into the end zone and try to score right away. I don't think Oklahoma wants to do that with three minutes left in the first half. Grind it out and make Texas Tech feel it defensively the rest of this first half. Oklahoma led 35-0 on the road last week at Kansas State. Could be a five touchdown first half again. But a good stop by Awe as he stacks up P. Ryan and Awe trying to get this defense riled up for Texas Tech. It's been one of the worst statistical defenses in college football. The takeaways are much better this year. More takeaways halfway through the year than they had all of last season. But this is still a defense that needs to make a couple of stands a game. And this could be one here. Well, they could use another takeaway. There's no doubt about it right here. Three by one, creating a lot of room out here. Mayfield throwing in a one on one coverage, and it's dropped. Dahu Green, the true freshman, seeking his first career catch. The Oklahoma City native had it in his hands and could not corral it. Yeah, Green is 6'4", 203 pounds. Three receivers into the boundary matched up on Nelson that's 6'2", and certainly Green should have had that. That would, It was about formationing. How can we create the best matchup? Three receivers into the boundary. A lot of room out wide for Green. He just could not finish the play. So a 32-yard try by Seibert. And Seibert missed it wide to the left. No good. The first miss of the true freshman's career. Well, Texas Tech defensively somehow gets off the field. A drop by a receiver, and then Seibert kind of yanked this from the beginning. Yeah. Just kind of pulled it left. And Kingsbury likes the fact that his defense was able to get off the field without first giving up a touchdown. And then you take three points off the board as well. While we have a moment, let's check in with Robert Flores. All right, Adam, uh, you guys have an unranked team with some momentum on the road. Same here in East Lansing. Unranked Indiana taking on Michigan State. Nate Sutfield, Simi Cobbs. They're down by just one late first half. Man, Indiana will not go away against all these big-time teams that they're playing. Reggie Davis on the screen pass, stepping out of bounds, and that will stop the clock without having to use one of those two timeouts. You know, Adam, I wondered how Michigan State could come back emotionally oh, from last goodness. week. I mean, that's one of the hardest things to do as an athlete, win or lose, to boot it up again emotionally a week later, and Michigan State is having some issues doing that now. Here comes Washington, and Washington close to the sticks. Based on where the current spot looks like it would be, would be shy of the line to gain. It would be very close to the marker. They just need to get to the edge of the 30-yard line. Third down and short, and Washington slips through. And there goes DeAndre Washington holding on to the football as Dakota Austin caught up to him from behind at the 46-yard line. 18-yard run for Washington. Keeping the tempo going. Tunnel screen. It's grabbed by Grant, and Grant trying to fight for yardage as he got grabbed by Nelson and Par or rather Stephen Parker, I should say, at the 49. Inside of a minute, still two timeouts for Texas Tech. Trying to take advantage of some miscues by Oklahoma here in the second quarter. 
For that rush, Mahomes extending the play with his feet. And Patrick Mahomes taking off. He runs to the sticks, has the first down, and steps out to stop the clock at 41 seconds. A lot of double moves outside by Texas Tech, trying to get a cheap one, but defended very well in coverage by Oklahoma thus far. We'll set up at the 41-yard line with 41 ticks to go. And let's see what happens here. It's a timeout from Oklahoma defensively. Texas second timeout of the half. 30 seconds into race. There have been some herky-jerky moments in this game. There have been some good sloppy moments in this game. But as we take a look at our Pacific Life game summary, we've got an exciting game certainly shaping up. Both teams, a couple of turnovers in this game. Texas Tech has taken advantage. And the ground game, maybe not the calling card for this Oklahoma team so far in the season. But they put up some good games, and they put up a good one so far. I think Bob Stoops would like the ground game to become a calling card down the stretch. You think of the offenses, TCU and Baylor in particular, that Oklahoma has to defend down the stretch run the football is sometimes your best defense and give those type of offenses less touches you gotta look ahead when they play Baylor at TCU you're gonna want to keep those teams off the field Absolutely. those offenses off the field as much as possible first down and ten Texas Tech Patrick Mahomes the 37th round draft pick of the Detroit Tigers a year ago he's got a fastball Unleashes it to the far side of the field. It's grabbed by Grant, and he steps out of bounds in front of Will Johnson. At the 34-yard line, getting closer and closer to Hatfield's potential field goal range. But again, they still have two timeouts to try to move the ball. On second down, another screen thrown to the outside. This time, it's Tony Brown. And Brown trying to lunge towards the sticks on his 12th career catch. And he is marked short, and that means that Texas Tech may have to use a timeout. However, there is a player injured on the field, and that's Balin Brown. Right tackle for Texas Tech, and that was a bad decision by the receiver, Brown, on the outside. You have to step out of bounds right there and preserve that timeout. And because Brown was unable to step out of bounds, the clock continues to move. And with an injured player inside of a minute, there you, you get go. charged with the timeout anyway. So Texas Tech will get... measure for the first down. If they're short of the first down, there's a possibility of a 10-second runoff. And again, to avoid that 10-second runoff, Texas Tech would have to use the timeout anyway. The reason for the runoff is because of the injured player inside of a minute in the half. Otherwise, teams would use... And not to say that I mean, this looks legitimate, obviously, for Brown, but teams in the past have been accused of leaving players on the ground to try to stop the clock and, that's and stop exactly, the momentum. You're exactly right. That's why the rule was put into place, because people were doing that late in games, late in half, late in games. Well, Balen Brown clearly looks to be favoring that left leg. A junior out of San Antonio, one of the four returning starters on this offensive line for Texas Tech. Now, they are measuring here, as Mike DeFee said, and it is looking like it's going to be just short. Based on the spot of the ball on the far side of the field. And indeed, it is a few chain lengths short. He'll have the explanation of the runoff and the timeout here. Short of the line to gain has elected to take his second timeout of the half to avoid the 10 second run. Just yeah, Adam, you explained that very well. And that. That's a benefit, obviously, of having timeouts late in the half or late in games is because you can avoid a situation just like that. Those 10 seconds obviously are very valuable for Texas Tech to have an opportunity not just to get three, but to potentially get this in the end zone. And again, you see the left leg is what Balen Brown was favoring. I hate it when they take those knee yeah. braces off those big guys up front. Yeah. It's usually not a good sign. Ameka Okafor has come into play right guard. Tony Morales moves to right tackle and a big third and one here for Texas Tech. Trying to get points before the end of the half. Mahomes keeps it and he's got the first down. Running towards the sideline and gets additional yardage and steps out near the 20. Excellent run by Pat Mahomes. 18 seconds left. They don't have to burn that final timeout. 
watch Mahomes here. He's he's an efficient runner with the football. He's not fast, but he's a little shifty and elusive, and he typically gets the most out of any run that's there for him. They are in Hatfield's field goal range here. His long is 37 on the season. Of course, his high school long is 50, but they're in field goal range. Empty set, first down. Mahomes taking a shot to the end zone, and it's Austin picking it off. Dakota Austin thrust into duty with the injury to Sanchez, and he comes up with a huge interception, the second of his career, and his first in two seasons. And it's the third pick of the day for Mahomes. And Dakota Austin gets a little redemption, because quite frankly, the play calling from Texas Tech was picking on number 27. Sanchez is out, and Austin has had some issues, probably four or five, maybe even a half dozen routes completed on 27 in coverage. And this one was intended to Davis out wide, and then Dakota Austin redeems himself to some extent and picks that one off. That was big. Let's see if... Oklahoma's content with an 11-point halftime lead. They certainly seem to be as Mayfield will take the knee. The ground game got it done for Oklahoma in that first half. Takeaways a huge story on both sides, and Austin comes away with an interception of the red zone to prevent Tech from scoring again after they had scored, taking advantage of two Oklahoma turnovers in that second quarter. Baker Mayfield going up against his former club. His ground game getting it done to the tune of 28 on the board. Seemed like he was a little bit amped up at the start of this game, but Mayfield certainly settled down, and P. Ryan and Mixon both got it done on the ground. And that's the way to get Mayfield settled down, right, is to run the football right down the hill. Let's check in with Olivia Harlan with Bob Stoops. Coach, I know you wanted execution to accompany your tempo. Is the 200-plus rushing yards what you had in mind? Yeah, that's all positive, but the, the uh, turnovers are horrible. We're, we're up 21-3, chance to go up 24-3, 28-3, our end of the field, and we fumbled a ball. That's bad football, so we got to do a better job. Adjustments in the second half? Take care of the football more than anything. Thank you. Thank you. 572 yards, 45 points, five turnovers combined. Shootout esque here in the Big 12. Back to the studio after this message and a word from our ABC stations. In the Big 12 this week, a back and forth affair so far, but it's an 11 point lead for the number 17 ranked Oklahoma Sooners on uh, Texas Tech at halftime as we bring it back into the broadcast booth in Norman. Adam Amin, Kelly Stauffer, Olivia Harlan in a moment as well. What stuck out first half? I think it was fairly evenly played Oklahoma running the football, which yep. we heard from Bob Stoops yesterday, by the way, that we thought they were going to try to do sure. that. Texas Tech turnovers. I mean, they shot themselves in the foot with a penalty in the red zone, but turning the ball over, you can't do that in a shootout like this. Don Olivia, let's check in. Yeah, guys, both teams converting off of turnovers in the first half. Most notably, Texas Tech's Patrick Mahomes with three picks. I asked Coach Kingsbury what he thought. He said, it's not a quarterback doubt. It's just really good pass coverage from the Sooners. Not bad reads from Mahomes. And on defense, dealing with Oklahoma's ground attack, not necessarily their calling card. He said he knew this week they'd ramp it up. His halftime message to his team, protect the football. Olivia, Oklahoma eighth in the Big 12 in rushing coming into action today, but Samaje Piran at 132 yards in the first half. His second 100-yard game rushing this season. That's it, after he had a half dozen last year. Sooners defer to the second half. They get the ball from the 25-yard line as we take a look at our Pacific Life game summary. Hey, what do you know? The things that stuck out to Kelly to get to focus in on, along with the big story of the day was Baker Mayfield coming in. Yeah. By and large, Baker May Mayfield had a pretty good half. He was amped up early. He just threw that one right into traffic and got a little greedy right there. But it was Pirine punishing people in that run game. The guys up front got lathered up, and they liked it. And then Mahomes... That was just an athletic play by a really good athletic player and striker. 
But Texas Tech, they can defend a lot of things well, but they can take the ball away at times, and it kept them in this game in the first half. 14 points off, two turnovers. Big to Peter, right in the middle of the zone, it's Sterling Shepard. And Shepard, who had a solid first half, will take it out across the 40 to the 42, 18 yards on the first play of the half. Yeah, maybe more tempo in the first half, or in the second half, and also maybe more Shepard. Nigel Bethel, though, is down on the deck for the second time in this game. And he was having some trouble kind of picking himself up off the ground. The trainer kind of massaging that hamstring, it looks like, on the backside. Now Lincoln Riley takes some time to chat with his quarterback, Baker Mayfield, two of the new additions in 2015 to the roster for Oklahoma. Of course, Mayfield sat out last year as a red shirt. Good to see Bethel back up on his feet. Heavily recruited sophomore out of one of the great high school programs in Booker T. Washington. So he's going to come off the field and for the second time today, Thierry Gima, redshirt junior, born in Gabon and the resident of France for a long time before he came back to the United States. He's at the top of the formation. He's going to get the assignment for the time being on Duran Neal of Oklahoma. Go first and ten. There is Gima. One pick against Sam Houston State in the opener this season. It's now a top ten FCS team for the Bearcats. Mayfield giving it to Joe Mixon. And there goes Joe Mixon with another big run and another burst. And Mixon taking it to the outside. Inside the 15. Biggest play of the day on the ground for the Oklahoma running game. 45 yards. As the pressure walks up in the box to the right, Mayfield does a great job of checking to a run to the left. Great line of scrimmage maintenance by the quarterback. On first down, Mayfield setting up, throws end zone, and it is batted away by Gima coming up clutch against Neal. First time he's tested in that matchup with Bethel off the field. A good play on the ball at the end of this. This was well thrown, and it looked like he was going to get through to Neal, but Gima breaks it up. And we've seen the play action before, kind of a boot to the left, typically throwing to the left. And that time, Neal came clear across the back of the end zone, away from the way the quarterback was rolling. Off play action to Pirine. Mayfield throws end zone. He's got Andrews. This kid's some kind of red zone target. And the redshirt freshman pulls it in for another score. Took 46 seconds. They went three quarters of the field, and Andrews with his fifth touchdown of his redshirt freshman season. He was listed as a tight end in high school. He had Kyle Allen as his quarterback. He was one of the top ranked tight ends in high school coming out, but he was no tight end. This guy, 245. This guy played outside receiver in high school, has great hands. A massive body, and this guy is your typical red zone target. Well, Lincoln Riley was saying, you know, I'm trying to figure out how to use this guy. Well, you know what? You may want to use him like that. Mayfield knows how to use him. That's good stuff. You're watching ESPN College Football on ABC, presented by K Jewelers. Oklahoma hot off the blocks in the second half and Mark Andrews the redshirt freshman out of Scottsdale Arizona with his fifth touchdown catch of the season already and it's back to the largest lead of the game at 18 for OU. Hodgson kicking into the wind and Jakeem Grant Texas Tech's leading receiver has been very quiet today trying to get it done in the return game and Grant grabbed from behind and brought down by Makaya Quick. For those of you just joining us, if you didn't know the big headline of the week, it was Baker Mayfield, the walk-on at Texas Tech two years ago, Big 12 Offensive Freshman of the Year, without a scholarship, some miscommunication, 
with Cliff Kingsbury, decides to transfer out with no scholarship offer at Oklahoma at the time. He enrolls before even contacting the coaches. Red shirts 2014, runs the scout team, wins the job in 2015. Extremely productive in his first six games. And for anybody who thought, oh, this is just another game for Baker Mayfield, who, by the way, to his credit, said all the right things, this guy's amped up today, and you can see it. Yeah, he's just a little bit excited anyway, but he has extra motivation today. I guarantee you that makes a difference to that young man. He had to harness it a little bit before this game. And so far, he's been rock solid for the most part. Mahomes for Grant, his fourth catch. And he takes it to the 32 as we check in with Olivia. Yeah, guys, and he's changed throughout the game. After his first touchdown, he was really quiet, came to the bench, did not celebrate or really talk to anyone. Second one, he just had a moment with Simon J. P. Ryan. And then progressively, he's changed and getting more excited, having more fun. Coach Stoops, that's exactly what he wanted. He said, don't be the rah-rah guy. That's for everyone else. Play in the backfield, blown up. Excellent play by Matt Diamond. First year starter who had a sack last week. He blows the play out of the backfield. It's third down and six. Adam Mayfield actually may have helped his defense right there. He was showing run on the sideline in his motion, and it definitely was a run that was blown up by his defense. He may be helping in more ways than one. Patrick Mahomes trying to keep Texas Tech in. It spreads it out with five wide. Three picks in the first half. He had thrown six all season coming in. Stryker, he got away from him. And got away from Alexander and got the first down. Excellent play by Patrick Mahomes. Continues to be slippery and elusive. And this might be the best part of Mahomes' offense right here. The stuff that goes off script as we see the Texas Tech is going to hurry up again. But all of that was outside the design of the play and running away from some pretty good defenders from Oklahoma. And two of the top tacklers in the Big 12, as a matter of fact. Grant is lined up. That running back here next to Mahomes, and in Oklahoma maybe saw that and wanted to take a timeout. Trying to get Grant involved. He's had a quiet day. Texas Tech trying to get something going. ESPN's College Football on ABC, presented by K Jewelers, brought to you by Honda, the power of dreams. Progressive, comparing rates to help you save. Now that's progressive. And Dr. Pepper, Dr. Pepper and college football, it's a one-of-a-kind tradition. Overcast day here in Norman, Oklahoma, but good football weather here in mid-October. Let's go back a play that caused Oklahoma to call a timeout, Kel, because it looked like Texas Tech may have been lining something with some trickery up. Yeah, I think Texas Tech was up to something. Akeem Grant is in the backfield right there. They're trying to hide him, and an Oklahoma diagnoses it and calls timeout before they could get it snapped, and Grant did not like it at all. Mahomes fires to Pearson, who has two catches today, did not have one coming into the season, right at the sticks for a first down. We haven't seen Texas Tech reach into the bag yet. You know there's always a couple plays that they can I think we're going to see it sooner than later, and I think that was going to be one of them if they could have snapped that before Oklahoma diagnosed it and burnt the timeout. Well, this is good shot position here from the 48. I'm going to instead go tunnel screen, and that's a rock pass for Mahomes because he put Lauderdale into a brutal spot to get blown up by P.L. Lindley. Lindley is in for the injured Devontae Bond, and Lauderdale couldn't do anything but run into a guy in a crimson jersey. Grant in the backfield. On second down, Mahomes dumps it off. This is Grant, and he lost his footing as he got stretched out to the sideline by Frank Shannon. And Adam, that was a good job by Shannon. You had it exactly right. Grant was in the backfield, and what happens is you run everyone off the coverage, and then you release Grant and throw it to him. Now he's matched up on a linebacker, but Shannon did a good job of chasing him down. Six of ten on third down so far today is Texas Tech, but they need a crucial one here. Down by 18 in the third. Oklahoma brings heat, and Mahomes has got to run against the blitz and uh, make a good decision. First down as he gets to the sideline and run out into the bench by Khalil Houghton, and that's going to be a late hit against the true freshman out of Waco, Texas. 
Nothing malicious, but I don't think he could stop his momentum and it eventually becomes a penalty. Highly sought after safety is Khalil Houghton, but that's a clear late hit. He made some significant contact after the play. Yeah, quarterback Mahomes was obviously well out of bounds, and a good job by Mahomes of knowing what direction to escape that time. The spinner safety was rotating to a one high look and left a lot of room to the right yeah. side for Mahomes. And I think Oklahoma is bringing at least five, maybe even yeah. six on that play, and all of a sudden there's a lot of space and a lot of green in front of them. And that's what Mike Stoops likes to do. They like to play a lot of one high safety with man to man underneath, and Mahomes has to know where the spinner safety is coming from. That time they rotated to the right and left a lot of room out to the right in the flat. Mahomes has actually been one of the best rushers for Texas Tech today. Averaging nearly seven a carry. He's got 68 yards on the ground. DeAndre Washington has 72. But in the meantime, Adam, Texas Tech looking to cash one in right here and get back in this thing again. Every time it seems like Oklahoma has Texas Tech on the road, here comes Texas Tech once again. And add about 20 seconds back to the clock as Washington has a block in front. And he's got very little room to go anywhere as Matt Romar, who had a fantastic game, what, a couple of weeks back against Texas, is there to make the stop. Yeah, Romar was blowing up Texas in the front seven and then got hurt. And he is a very active player at six foot, 290 pounds. Like a bowling ball in there. Washington got grabbed from behind by Charles Walker and brought down. Again, red zone efficiency was a problem for Texas Tech. Cliff Kingsbury said they didn't play with enough urgency last week. Today, three of four in the red zone. A couple of touchdowns and a field goal. There was a red zone hit at the end of the first half by Mahomes. Big third down and seven coming up here. Stockton is the last man on the field for Texas Tech's offense. And they line up the receivers very wide. Now they bring one closer to the line. And Stockton on third down has nowhere to go. Oklahoma stopped in the middle. And maybe a surprising play call on third and a little longer than medium. That was third and six or seven. I was going to say the exact same thing. That was a little interesting. When you have a, an offense that's predicated on going horizontally so you can go vertically, and then you run right up into the mouth of a defense. I didn't understand that one at all. And that might have been all on the quarterback because I don't know that Cliff Kingsbury understood, or understood it, the look on his face right there. So from 27, Hatfield is two for two now on the day. Points for Texas Tech. They're back within two scores. Still a lot of football to play. 9-16 for the third here in Norman. Welcome back to ESPN College Football on ABC. Presented by K Jewelers. Well, for a lot of Oklahoma fans, their quarterback of old Landry Jones came on for the Pittsburgh Steelers and actually helped beat the Arizona Cardinals, just their second loss. Arizona at 4-2 and two gets set to host the 1-5 Baltimore Ravens. Flacco trying to get the Ravens off the ground a little bit. Monday night countdown starts at 6 on ESPN. Landry Jones later to make his first career start against the Kansas City Chiefs. Ross has not had much of a chance at all today. And he's going to take a knee out to the 25 from his Oklahoma. Let's take a look at today's AT&T's strong performance. Samaj P. Ryan, just his second 100-yard game of the season on the ground. And very well blocked up front, but we got the sense that Bob Stoops was wanting to see this out of his offense. It is the air raid, but the modern air raid gets a lot out of the run game, and P. Ryan is a guy that I firmly believe gets better the more he touches it and sees it. And you see this duo right here is something that the Big 12 is going to have to deal with down the road. 
first time that Oklahoma's had two 100 yard rushers in a game since last season against Texas Tech. It's been a problem for their defense, the rush, for quite some time now. Been a problem today, especially in between the tackles. Uh, stretch to the edge this time, and there goes Samaj P. Ryan. Running angry today, he takes it inside the 30 yard line of Texas Tech, where Bethel finally catches up to him. And just simple zone blocking up front. The offensive line, the more you run the football, the more they get lathered up and get a feel for the running back behind them, and they're feeling it right now at Oklahoma. Longest run of the season for Oklahoma, that was 48 yards. This is Jeffrey Meade with his fourth catch of his career. But P. Ryan has helped Oklahoma's rushing attack put together a season-high 309 and counting here in the third quarter. And remember, coming into this year, Adam, Oklahoma was replacing three-fifths of their offensive line, and they had a very good offensive line a year ago. They lost five guys that had a collective 145 starts. They're just now starting to get settled in this season. Especially at the tackle spot, Darrell Williams, Tyrus Thompson, both NFL draft picks last season. Here's Mixon now, who's been the... If you want to use the cliched thunder and lightning term, he's been the lightning. He's been the quicker guy going between the tackles, and J.J. Gaines stops him after he picks up the first. And I think that is important. When you change the running back skill set, you change the angles a little bit defensively, and I think that's what's happening between Mixon, a little shiftier, and then P. Ryan, who hits you right in the face mask. Mixon breaks one tackle in the backfield. And Mixon breaks off a first down run inside the five. And he's fired up now, too. Dragon Johnson and Allen with him. It's first and goal. Oklahoma, the running attack has been something else today. Patience and vision. Mixon showed it right there. Mayfield trying to shake away from Allen, who grabs him for a loss. The play by Dakota Allen, the redshirt freshman, one of the top tacklers already in the Big 12, stopping Mayfield. Baker Mayfield said his, so he said the right things all week long, but his teammates did say that he seemed a little bit more amped up, and I, I, I can't believe that a kid in any situation, in any position, wouldn't want a little bit of revenge after he was spurned in some way, shape, or form by a former school and coach. P. Ryan, what a cut. Another touchdown. Over 180 yards on the ground for Sinatra P. Ryan today. Dimitri Flowers, who's an H-back, fullback type of guy, number 36, did such a good job of slicing across the formation, kicking out, but you called it, Adam, to plant that left foot and get down into the end zone. I mean, the one cut and get downhill is what that run was about. Sliced in by Cyber. Watch Flowers come on the motion, and then he kicks out. He's a 230-pounder. He'll come in motion right here. It's called slice. You actually pull the guard there, too. And then it's the read by P. Ryan. He sees that his fullback is going to have leverage pushing the defense outside, so you cut and get up in behind it. Pull a guard, pull the 230-pounder, and then P. Ryan, who knows how to finish, does just that into the end zone. For the third time today. When we're done here in Norman on ABC Saturday Night Football presented by Walmart, one of the great running backs in the country, you'll see Ezekiel Elliott with new starting quarterback JT Barrett for the number one Ohio State Buckeyes into the birthplace of college football at Rutgers. Look at our Northwestern Mutual College Football Rankings. Number one, Ohio State on the road at Rutgers tonight. You'll see that later on this evening. Clemson just blitz wow. past Miami, 58 to nothing. Some games in action right now as well. Michigan State getting all he can handle. And Baylor did not score 60 points today. They got to 45. They got tired or something. They had 35, I think, at halftime. Yeah, they did. Only 10 points in the second half. Remember, November 3rd. The polling really begins That's with right. the committee of 13. The college football playoff committee starts ranking people. And I think with JT Barrett now starting for Ohio State, I might see fit to move him into my top four. 
Yeah, you do not have him in your top four no, last week, Adam. Just on the outside looking in a week ago. We got a kick into the win by Hodgson. Grant trying to get it going. In the return game from the three-yard line. He's got a lot of space if he can get past some defenders, and there goes Grant. It was actually Hodgson, the kicker, who forced him back to the inside. And he has decent field position out of the 37. So these are your current top four, and knowing that Baylor and TCU will have to play at some point, there's a lot of football to play, obviously, but these are your top four plus the first two what out. What do you think? What do you think of my top four? You haven't really said much. You just kind of throw them out there, a, and then you don't really comment on well, whether you like it or you not. Know, Utah throws me off a little bit at number one. I know they've been playing exceptional football, but I saw them get tested a little bit last week against Arizona State. So as a number one team, yeah. do they stick out there? Yeah, way? that's true. And I could move that a little bit, but I like them because they... They defend, they run it, they defend the run, and they play special teams. That travels and plays well against anybody. They're number three team in the country right now. They're an underdog against USC. Mahomes taking a shot, and he actually overthrew Devin Lauderdale, incomplete, with Thomas in coverage. I'm excited for Ohio State vote tonight. Again, you'll see it on ABC. Chris Fowler gave a good interview in the Asbury Park Press, one of the local Jersey favorites to a writer, Ryan Dunleavy, and said he expects a four-quarter fist fight from Rutgers as they host the number one team for the first time in 13 years. Yeah, don't be surprised if Rutgers is in that one to the end. I mean, they may very well do that. They defend pretty well, and but I think JT Barrett, quite frankly, is going to be the difference. I think yep. that should have been the quarterback choice from the beginning. Mahomes on second down. Kind of floating it for Ian Sadler, but a little out of his reach, and it's third down and ten. Yeah, and he actually had Sadler. Mahomes kept the play alive, was moving to his right, and as a quarterback, you have to judge that. You're moving, the receiver's moving, you have to take a little bit off the ball, and if you don't, it'll sell, it, sell on you like it did Mahomes right there. Third down. Mahomes, another shot, this time to the outside. And it's grabbed by Lauderdale as he's ripped down by Thomas. A good play for Texas Tech to get into Oklahoma territory. Jordan Thomas was on the coverage and just man-to-man -man outside. We've seen a lot of that. One high safety, man-to-man -man underneath. And Lauderdale did a nice job of coming back for that ball. Screen thrown out to the sideline for Reggie Davis. A grab at the ankles by Will Johnson. has done a nice job as the nickel today, but may have uh, tweaked something as he is uh, gingerly getting back up and trying to work his way back and he's down on the deck. Will Johnson has been that nickel back that's been in the game. Steven Parker typically plays there, but what Mike Stoops discovered last week actually against Kansas State was they have a really good combination by keeping Parker at the safety and getting a lot out of Will Johnson at that nickel back position. Maybe a cramp as he's getting some water while we have a moment. Row flow back in the studio. All right, I'm right now on ESPN3 or the Watch ESPN app. Undefeated Toledo has scored 21 unanswered points to reclaim the lead over UMass. Philip Ely to Michael Roberts, 31-28, headed to the fourth for the Rockets in Foxborough. Looking at some group of five teams. Toledo has been up there this year. Memphis obviously put up some big numbers down the road against Tulsa last night in their victory. They beat Ole Miss last week. Houston was ranked coming into this week. Just the American Conference has been really good. Toledo's out of the MAC. These are teams that could make some serious impact as we get closer towards the college football playoff rankings. Yeah, the AAC certainly is making some noise in Boise State. They got taken out behind Woodshed by Utah State two weeks ago. And then Utah State has the same thing happen to them against San Diego State. So I think certainly Boise State is completely out of the picture. They were probably my favorite to be that team this year. And I can't forget about the Temple Owls. They've got a game against Notre Dame coming up next week. That's going to be pretty, pretty big. Sadler is the first down. And Sadler shoved out of bounds inside the Oklahoma 30-yard line. The Sadler was running an out route on Frank Shannon in that linebacker position. And trust me, if Oklahoma has to make a living at that, Texas Tech wants to go back to it again. That's a mismatch. Option, Mahomes. Forced to keep it. Got past Stryker with a flag thrown on the play. And dumped down at about the 23-yard line. Let's check the marker here. 
His ability to extend plays has been maybe the biggest thing that has changed the Texas Tech offense. Cliff Kingsbury talked to several writers about it before the year. Holding. Defense number 93. 10-yard penalty will be added to the end of the run. Already results in a first down. Wade on the holding penalty on Oklahoma. And remember that uh, Kingsbury has some experience with that right. kind of improv. His name is Manziel, and he harnessed it pretty well. But you have to, there's a fine line, is not to choke him down too much and still get that improv out of him. And he's doing a really good job with Mahomes because you're right, that might be the best part of this offense currently. And Kingsbury, the one-year offensive coordinator at AM, and Manziel won the Heisman. Washington trying to bounce left and tackled in the backfield. Walker and Alexander both there to stop him right at the line of scrimmage. Second down and 10. And don't take away what makes him special, and that might be what really makes Pat Mahomes a special player, his ability to use his feet in a really impressive fashion. Because you want him to stay within the confines of the offense. Right, 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 exactly. You don't want to do with that special talent like you said. Eric Morris now in his third season as the offensive coordinator for Texas Tech. Oklahoma's going to use another timeout on defense here. Oklahoma takes a second timeout. Oh, five minutes to go here in the third. Texas Tech trying to get a touchdown, but they're in field goal range as we celebrate the 11th year of the All-State Nets, sponsoring the Good Hands Field Goal Nets. All-State makes contributions to participating universities' general scholarship funds for every field goal and extra point kick. And to date, All-State has contributed millions in scholarship funds. For these two teams, it's the 23rd meeting of all time. Oklahoma's won 16 of the 22. In the Big 12 era, 13 of the 19 belong to the Sooners. Kingsbury came in 0-5 on the road against ranked teams. 0-2 in his first two meetings with Oklahoma, uh, with Oklahoma against Bob Stoops. Remember the last time Texas Tech was down here was third and six, I believe, and they ran it right into the mouth of the defense. So you would think they would be a little more creative after having to settle for a field goal the last trip into the red zone. Texas Tech too explosive of an offense to ever think they're out of a game, but they need touchdowns. Taking the screen, Mahomes wanted to get Davis. Now he dumps it back out for Grant, and Grant lunging for the pylon. He's in. Touchdown, Texas Tech. They needed a touchdown. It's ruled as a touchdown, and Grant, who's been quiet for most of the day, punches it in. This was a really good job at a secondary route. They were trying to show screen as you see Grant lunging into the end zone and gets that ball across. Just penetrate the front part of the end zone line or actually go back one more time because his right foot was out. Yep, this he play, might have been out. I think this play is going to come up about a yard short. I think yard and a half is where his right foot. Watch he it right to here. Stop it right there. Yeah, I think that he's out. That foot is out. The ball's going to be out on about the half yard line, but. It was a good adjustment by both Grant and Mahomes because what they were trying to do is show the screen and then typically the guy that blocks for the screen leaked into the corner of the end zone, well defended down the field, but then you dump it to a guy like Grant who can get something done with it. I think Davis was the guy who had leaked towards the middle of the end zone. I think you're and that's right. who Mahomes seemingly was looking at when that was covered. Back out to Grant, which is basically the third read at that point. And Grant what? did a nice job of getting close to the end zone, if not in. Yeah, our camera people just made it really easy for the referee right there to call this one the half-yard line. And Gary Brown's a replay official. Mike DeFee is uh, on the headset right now. Watch where the ball is when the right foot goes out right there about the half-yard line. Yep, I think we're good about right there. And nicely Foot's done. down. Good job, guys. Our fantastic production crew led by Brian Boyle, Bob Frateroli, and a slew of men and women who've been outstanding for us for the first seven weeks of the season. And ruling on the field is a touchdown. Seemingly there is enough evidence with the right foot going out of bounds to overturn the call. It will still be first and goal coming up here for Texas Tech if indeed they overturn the initial ruling. And as we said, Texas Tech just too After explosive. Review, the runner's right foot hit the sideline. The ball's short of the goal. It'll be first and goal. Please set the game clock to 4.59.
I beg your pardon, but it should be at the half yard line. Yeah, I thought it was a good it, look at it. Well, the ball was. Uh, I'm surprised they kind of pushed it back. But right, here you go. Tech needs a touchdown now. They've got four chances, and trust me, this seems like four down territory. They got four chances to punch this one in. Extra offensive lineman to the right side. That's Castaneda. It'll be Mahomes on the sneak. Looks like he may have broken the plane, but it's going to be up to the line. Judge who raises his arms, and it's a touchdown for Texas Tech, officially here. That's now seven rushing touchdowns on the year for Patrick Mahomes. And a really good push. You talked about it. They had the extra offensive lineman in in Castaneda. And if you can stop the initial penetration, it's typically low man wins up front in those short yardage situations and goal line situations. And that was Texas Tech right there. I think the low man was Castor, the center. So big 75 getting low there for Tech. And they're right back within two scores. <laughs> So still inside of five to play a lot of time in this game for two explosive offenses to try to make something work as you see Caster on the sideline. A couple more games on ESPN. These are some marquee matchups. The only matchup of ranked FBS teams, A&M and Ole Miss. Kevin Sumlin going on the road. And then Washington will get set to take on number 10 Stanford. Kevin Hogan has been so efficient. Christian McCaffrey has been killing it. Had that monster game last week on a Thursday night, putting up four touchdowns. You'll see that doubleheader starting at 7 o'clock Eastern tonight. And of course, Kevin Sumlin, who was the head coach at A&M when Cliff Kingsbury was the offensive coordinator there. Had that big year with Johnny Manziel. Sumlin has five wins on the road against AP-ranked teams since 2012. That's tied for the most. I don't think a lot of people would realize that. And that's a prove-it game, I think, between A&M and Ole Miss. It feels it's like an elimination game, doesn't it? Oh, I think it's definitely that, but I think it's a prove-it. Who are you right now? If you want okay. to be a big boy in the SEC, then... You need to have a big boy response in that game tonight. You know, you and I had a conversation, and there's a long way to go, but the guys on game day had a great conversation about what if the SEC and the Pac-12 both get left out at the end uh -oh. of the year? If Notre Dame has a big run to close out the year, if the Big 12 representative is already in, if Ohio State and Florida State both go unbeaten, what do you do? This is a penalty marker throw, and that ball was out of bounds before it reached the end zone. I think that's the kind of chaos I'm looking for. You like I don't the chaos. want any you love chaos. conference in particular being left out, <laughs> but I want chaos. Free kick out of bounds by the kicking. All we placed at the 35 yard line. Clayton Hatfield with the procedure penalty and decent field position coming up here. You want to talk offensive line. Let's get inside the trenches here. How about a couple of impact players? Our left tackle in Orlando Brown and Samia, the other tackle, the other bookend, and you get two running backs behind them that are physical, they're decisive, they have good vision, they've had good patience at times, and the run game is what Bob Stoops wanted to see today, and he's seen it in spades. There is Brown, the redshirt freshman left tackle. This is Mixon, uh, one at the middle, and Texas Tech with a stop. A uh, loss of one on the play. It'll be second down and 11 coming up here. But again, this is Jonathan Alvarez. You have Brown, a redshirt freshman. Samia, a true freshman. And Oklahoma, maybe not their calling card, as Olivia talked about with Bob Stoops earlier, but 329 on the ground a season high. Tech just got a stop, though, against the run, and now it looks like a passing formation for Baker Mayfield in Oklahoma. Tech needs some stops. Mayfield the pass. Taking a one-on-one -on -one shot. Down the sideline, and it's incomplete. Big play by Nigel Bethel against Neal. Boy, Bethel has hit the deck twice, seemingly, with some injuries, perhaps a cramp or two, but he comes up big on that play to force third and long. And this was a late throw, but a tremendous throw by Mayfield. But watch Bethel right at the very end. He plays the football in the hand. Don't panic if you're in the trail position as he, as Bethel was on Neal. Play the ball when it enters the neighborhood, and... Nigel Bethel did a tremendous job on that play. Don't panic as a young defensive back. Just play the ball when it gets when it gets into your zip code. Cal, this feels like a big third down right now, especially for Texas Tech to try to get off the field. I couldn't agree more. It's a four-man rush. Mayfield, a little bit of pressure. Mixon with a one-handed catch. Can anybody tackle him in the open field? They cannot. 
At least not before he gets the first down. Joe Mixon playing with some fire today, and he picks up 13. And Robertson, who is a huge cog in this Texas Tech defense, the heartbeat of that D was down. But watch the catch on this screen, and very good job of setting it out up out front, but the adjustment, the body position by Mixon to catch that football. And it was Nigel Bethel on that play that missed the tackle, but it was more about just getting a snoot full of number 25 Joe Mixon <laughs> on that. What a, a finisher of plays, both running backs, Mixon and P-Line. They make you earn it when you come to tackle those two. Mixon still in along with Flowers. Going right back to him. Trying to find that alley. And it seems like he gets contacted that time by Allen. And then he still runs for three or four, maybe even five extra yards. Picks up eight on that play when it felt like it could have only been four or five. And the good running backs always fall forward when they're tackled. And both P. Ryan and Mixon have done a very good job of that today. Look at that, 10 yards a carry. Well, another Texas Tech player is down. And you wonder if it is cramps right now. We've seen it happen a couple of times, at least based on how the training staff has come out to try to look at some players. And Justin Nelson yeah. is actually yeah. holding his right hand. Yeah. You can't get off the field when your right hand is hurt. That's what they're taught these days, though. You know, to slow down these fast offenses, even if it's an upper body injury, go to the ground and buy some time. Yeah, the crowd booed. They they thought that that's what they, they were on the same line of thinking as you as Nelson has to get helped up. Well, we told you we have Stanford Washington tonight out west. As soon as that's done, Sports Center at night to wrap up what's been a big day in college football will continue to be a huge night tonight. But when Washington Stanford is done, We'll slide over to Sports Center at night. Also streaming live on Watch ESPN. We have our World Series matchup as well. It'll be Mets and Royals starting up early in the week next week. P. Ryan is back into the game along with Mixon on second down and two. This is the 58th snap for Oklahoma. It's the 40th run play. And it's another big play for Mixon who makes games miss in the open field and then gets taken down inside the 30-yard line by Tevin Madison. And Adam, out of that two-back run game, everything is saying run left on that side, but if you don't close the back door defensively, Mixon has already demonstrated the ability to get there both with vision and with speed, and he does it on that play, the cut back to the right. Now both Pirine and Mixon are up above 150 yards on the day. 186 for Pirine, 152 for Mixon. They've combined for five rushing touchdowns. Mayfield has one passing touchdown to Andrews today. Mixon is grabbed and brought down. Good play by Awe. On a fourth, second and long. We've seen that already on this drive. Second and long, third and long. But Texas Tech's defense spending a lot of time on the field. And even though it's second and long, you don't want to abandon the run game. And sometimes offenses will adjust before the defenses force you to do that. You can manage this down in distance by running a successful run again right here. Texas Tech defensive coordinator David Gibbs in his first season. Seventh defensive coordinator the last seven years for Texas Tech. They do spread it out on second and long. Late blitz for Texas Tech. There's one-on-one -on -one coverage downfield. It was Mixon on the wheel route against Gaines. And the flag is thrown. J.J. Gaines, who leads the Big 12 with four picks, may get flagged here. Pass interference. Defense number three. 15-yard penalty from the previous spot. And getting them into long situations, but again, fresh set of downs for Oklahoma's offense. And what a luxury to have when you can put Mixon in the slot, number 25 matched up on J.J. Gaines, and then you can have this result at the end. And that's another staple of the Mike Leach air raid offense right. is getting guys on wheel routes from the slot position to get matchups like that. Fifth accepted penalty against Texas Tech, just two against Oklahoma so far today. Here is P. Ryan, and Awe is there to spin him down at the 16. Uh, 
Awe, born in Lagos, Nigeria. One of the top tacklers in the Big 12. Do we have another injury here. Yeah, looks like Dakota. Nope, that is not Dakota Allen. But it is Demetrius Alston, the senior out of Norcross, Georgia, the junior college transfer. Let's check in with Robert in the studio. All right, Adam, number eight Alabama has won 57 consecutive games against unranked opponents, but Tennessee's Jalen Hurd gives the Vols a fourth quarter lead at 14-13 in Tuscaloosa. Uh-oh. Tennessee hasn't won against Alabama on the third Saturday in October since that Arian Foster comeback some time ago, almost a decade ago, I think. So Alston's getting tended to. Let's check in with Olivia on the sideline. Guys, Texas Tech corner Justice Nelson, he went down with a hand injury on that last play and on that last drive, and Oklahoma fans were booing. Well, he came to the sideline and his hand was shaking, and trainers asked him to make a fist, and he could not close his hand in a full fist. They just took him into the locker room. But Olivia, you said he went down with a hand injury. That's a problem I have. <laughs> you don't go down with a hand injury. You go off to the <laughs> sideline with a hand injury, and I think that's what the crowd doesn't like right now. There, all of a sudden, there's some injuries showing up when. Oklahoma wants to put them to the metal. Second down, 10 coming up here. Some might call it gamesmanship, right? Yeah, they might call it something else where I come from. Second down, 10 with Pirine in the backfield with Mayfield. The fake, the slam behind Westbrook incomplete. That was thrown in front of Gima in coverage, and it's third down and 10. Big third down here again as well. But at this point, a field goal does make it a three-score lead for Oklahoma. They've been good on third down so far, and Texas Tech has done them some favors, too. Right now, you have Shepard, Sterling Shepard, up by yep. himself up here with three receivers away from him. You would think they would try to find number three sooner or later. Matched up with Bethel at the top. And you see the safety creeping over yep. to give help over the number one receiver as well. Mayfield to the middle. It's caught. It's a touchdown for Deron Neal. A backbreaker for Oklahoma. And the second touchdown pass of the day for Baker Mayfield. And it's been some third quarter offensively for the Sooners. Mayfield stared down his receiver, Neal, for quite some time, and Johnson, the safety, broke on it, but just took a bad angle. 22-point lead now for Oklahoma. And watch where Mayfield's head goes initially. He's staring down Neal early on, and then number seven at the top right there is Johnson. Just takes a bad angle. He's... He diagnoses the route, but doesn't see the route to finish on the same line as the football. You see right there, in the end, Johnson Phil ends up deeper than the receiver did. He did all the hard work, just didn't finish properly in the proper angle. 103 to play third quarter, Oklahoma. At one point, led by 18, Texas Tech was able to cut it back to one score, but back to a 22-point game. From Memorial Stadium, Adam Amin, Kelly Stauffer, Olivia Harlan, marquee game of the Big 12 this week. The Texas Tech and that high-powered offense trying to come on the road and get a ranked win on the road for the first time under Cliff Kingsbury. But Oklahoma, which has one blemish on its season, and that was that get behind quick and watch Texas churn away the clock type of game where they just could not get the offense going. Their offense has been really good the last few weeks. 55 nothing last week against K-State. And now 49 points, not even through three quarters here today against Texas Tech. And really, Oklahoma outplayed Texas the majority of that game, quite frankly. They were down 14 to nothing early and outscored them 17 to 10 the rest of the way. And the offense just started a little bit too slow. Into the win, the kick for Grant from the goal line. Three kick return touchdowns in Grant's career. And he's had a couple of good returns, but it's chopped down by Houghton, shy of the 20-yard line at the 17. So this is what we got going on tonight. Big matchups on the ESPN networks. Again, AM on the road at Ole Miss. Sumlin, five road wins since 2012. 28 straight ACC wins, but Florida State has to go on the road tonight. Stanford at home. 
They had a long stretch where they couldn't beat Washington. They won six of the last seven. And then JT Barrett expecting the four-quarter fist fight tonight with Rutgers. And don't sleep on Georgia Tech. Florida State having to go to play Georgia Tech on the road either. It's about time that that offense gets on track, and it's always a difficult offense to defend. Mahomes to the sideline and caught by Lauderdale for a first down. Yeah, we were talking about those scenarios, and I just thought it was interesting because the game day gang made some good points. If, say, Notre Dame makes a big run, they've got Stanford at the end of the year. If they're a one-loss team to Clemson, how do you keep them out, potentially, of the mix? And who gets the short end of the stick? Is it the SEC? Is it the Pac-12? This still feels like, and I know we're using basketball terms, but this is most conferences are one big conferences, and eventually one team is going to come out of this Big 12, the, the victor through that November eliminator. So do you keep them out, or do you put them in if the team is undefeated? I think there's so many interesting scenarios as we're diving into the second half of the year. Second down to eight, Mahomes out wide for Sadler. Pushes away Austin with a stiff arm, and then gets brought down by Johnson. That's why that a and Ole Miss matchup feels big tonight. That feels like an elimination game. Yeah, I think you're right. I think that's a fair title for that game, elimination game. I think the Ole Miss winning out is maybe the SEC's worst-case scenario, yeah. to be quite honest with you. Because they've lost a couple times, including a loss to Memphis earlier this season, lost to Florida. But here is Oklahoma with a 22-point lead. Impressive third quarter, three long drives for touchdowns. ESPN College Football continues after this message. And a word for our ABC students. ESPN, home of the college football playoff. Back in Norman, Oklahoma, start of the fourth quarter as Oklahoma has bulged its lead out to 49 to 27. They're down at about two and a half coming up here for Texas Tech. Trying to convert here in Washington, fighting for the yardage, getting past Stryker, and still on his feet. Excellent run by Washington out towards midfield. Keeps this drive alive for Texas Tech. Adam, in that third quarter, o Oklahoma had three possessions, touchdown drives of 75, 75, and 65. Wow. Yo, what, is what is that? Mahomes off the fake. Again, good coverage downfield for Oklahoma with a penalty flag thrown. Davis gets the outlet, and he's brought down by Shannon. Check the marker. Holding. Defense number 27. 10-yard penalty from the previous spot, automatic, first down. Austin called for that defensive holding penalty. Remember, Austin has a pick in this game. Zach Sanchez was injured on the first play of the game. That's a tough loss for Oklahoma if that extends beyond today as they go forward for that defense. <laughs> 529 yards for Oklahoma. Texas Tech, 376 so far. Pressure from the nickelback Johnson forcing Mahomes to scramble out of the pocket. And Kingsbury ended up uh, banging into Dominique Alexander there on the sideline. I think they might throw a flag for grounding. You got to get out of the pocket, but if you're out of the pocket, you have to throw it past the line of scrimmage. And maybe the argument here is that Mahomes banged it down on the ground shy of the line, to line of scrimmage, which would have been the 40. Yeah, I think you're exactly right. Mahomes knows it, I think, right now based on him shaking his head right there. He threw it into the ground. Quarterback was outside the pocket, grounded the ball. There was an eligible receiver. After the play, personal foul, late hit out of bounds. Offense number 51. The 15 yard penalty from the previous spot. It'll be second down. So the ball did not cross the line of scrimmage like we talked about, but there was an eligible receiver in the field, but or in the vicinity, right there. But yeah, Tony Morales. Sandler, yeah. Oh, that's more. That's the oh, play. Yeah. Morales shoved Alexander into Kingsbury, and that was the personal foul called. Sadler was in the area as a receiver. And Morales, one of the new members of that offensive line. 
So second down and a quarter of the field now for Texas Tech. Under pressure by Walker. Just a three-man rush that time for Oklahoma, and that's getting to Mahomes, and it's going to be third down and a mile. And Walker, from his defensive tackle position, did a nice job of just continuing to work. So many times at that tackle position, it doesn't happen early, especially rushing the quarterback, and you have to continue to work, and in the end, it gets Mahomes out of bounds. Not an easy way to extend the drive. Nice right screen here, trying to give Grant an opportunity to get a lot of yardage, but he'll be hit shot of the 40. Taken down by Shannon. Feels like four down territory at this point. Texas Tech wants to stay in this game. Yeah, I agree. I think they'll go for it right here. Why not? About 11 yards here. <laughs> Pressure coming. Striker grabbed him by the waist. And down goes Mahomes as Diamond got him from up top. Turnover on down to Oklahoma takes over. Striker got off the ball so quickly. That play had no chance. The linchpin of the defense, striker off the edge gets a good jump. This play was dead on arrival. I love it, yeah, I love it when you get that beat. Boots on stomp. You're watching ESPN College Football on ABC, presented by K Jewelers. Only Baylor has averaged more total yards per game. Only Bowling Green State has had more passing yards per game than Texas Tech so far this season. But for the most part, Oklahoma's defense has uh, stymied what has been an explosive Texas Tech offense all year. They just scored 30 in every game. And another big run here for Samaj P. Ryan as he works into Texas Tech territory, running into Gima. New second down here. P. Ryan getting close to 200 yards on the day. Ran for 213 last year against Texas Tech with three touchdowns. And we got the sense that Oklahoma certainly was going to want to highlight their what they thought was a good advantage up front. And we've seen that. Two really good running backs and an offensive line that has gotten in sync with them today. Nothing much there as Dakota Allen makes the stop. Having to get up on the bottom of that pile. Flowers a little bit slow to get up after that play as well. P. Ryan and Mixon both over 150, 150 plus. Look at that average. Man. That's incredible. Again, yeah, this was the biggest issue. Texas Tech's defense has been bad this year, and their defensive coordinator said as much, David Gibbs. But you know what you're getting when you get to Texas Tech. It's a rebuilding job on that side of the football. And Texas Tech is trying to improve the defense. They didn't play poorly against two lesser opponents in this conference in Iowa State and Kansas. They played well in those games coming into this, so you felt maybe some confidence for these guys on the defensive side of the football. But again, he knows what uh, what is at stake and what is going to be necessary to try to improve what is uh, a defense that's been a little leaky this year and in years past. Yeah, and he, David Gibbs certainly knows what he wants to get done, and it's going to center on taking the football away and defending the red zone, but there are also some recruiting that needs to go on. Sure. They're down in five here for Oklahoma. Texas Tech had a top 40 recruiting class this year. They're 35th in terms of recruiting this year. A bunch of Big 12 teams are in the top 40, so recruiting's getting good. Over the top of the defense, it is Westbrook. Beating Madison on a nice floating pass by Mayfield to convert on third down. 27 yards there. A lot of times from the slot position, the inside receiver releases on the fade outside, and it just creates separation. Madison could not stay up with the receiver Westbrook that time, and that's where I think 
Texas Tech needs to take a step forward in recruiting those guys on the back end. Oklahoma, as an example, they can get pressure, keep one high, and cover man-to-man. -man. Texas Tech isn't quite there yet. Here I a couple yards there. We talked about the kind of the dress reversal for Oklahoma going forward and David Gibbs knows that he has his hands full and he knows he has some pieces to add to the puzzle but Oklahoma going forward remember they still have the gauntlet to run down the stretch TCU Baylor and Oklahoma State so offensively and defensively Oklahoma is still going to be tested down the road more than they have this point in the season. Texas Tech has some games to try to grow a little bit as well. Here on through a crushing block on the outside. Nixon taking it back and cutting it back towards the inside of the 14-yard line. Again, Texas Tech trying to get bowl eligible after they had a rough season last year and missed out on a bowl. Meanwhile, Oklahoma, look at the gauntlet. You were talking about it starting November 14th. Baylor on the road, TCU at home, and then at Oklahoma State, which is suddenly Ooh. looking like a big, big game. Yeah, and the interesting thing is, is this conference really down the stretch runs through Oklahoma State. Oklahoma, That's Baylor, right. and Stillwater. TCU all have to go to Stillwater. That's an so excellent point. It is going to be interesting in this conference. Now Stillwater is going to become the center of the college football universe for the last three weeks of the season. There is P. Ryan. He gets chopped down after picking up the first down. Again, for those of you who just joined us today, some terrible news in Stillwater. Our hearts and prayers go out to everybody. They were very classy about it here in Norman. They spent some time, a moment of silence before the game today after there was a, an accident at the homecoming parade in Stillwater. Oklahoma State did play a schedule, and Oklahoma State was in control most of their game earlier today. Hundred and ninety-nine yards for Samaj P. Ryan. Mayfield churning as much of the clock as possible. Mayfield keeping it. And he gets brought down by Pete Robertson. Good to see him back on the field for Texas Tech. Mayfield 14 to 21, over 200 yards passing. An early interception, but a couple of touchdowns since. And that interception was really about the only really poor decision I saw of the young man and we okay. talked about that needing to kind of manage his emotions because of the history that he's had with Texas Tech and I think he's been very successful at doing just that today. Neil Shepard blocking and Neil steps out of the fire. And there was a penalty mark for throwing after the play. Deshaun Johnson was coming out of bounds. After the play, personal foul. They hit out of bounds. Defense, seven. Half the distance from the goal, automatic first down. First down anyway, and not going to hurt you much in terms of penalty yardage. About the two and a half yard line or so. And it was way late. You can see number seven is going to come flying in right there. And Neil is clearly out of bounds. It was interesting to see Sterling Shepard's reaction on that play because in this air raid system, the, the wide receivers really have to block on screens. And Shepard felt that he blocked it up really well and thought Neil was very late getting to the outside. He thought he blocked well enough to take Neil into the end zone. You have to be a good blocking wide receiver in both of these offenses with all the perimeter stuff these two teams do. He ran over 200 yards and he ran lunging in for touchdown number four today. The breakout game that Oklahoma and Bob Stoops was hoping for from Samaj P. Ryan. 55 points back to back weeks for the Sooners. Last year, P. Ryan had 263 carries for over 1,700 yards, 21 touchdowns. And some people were wondering is there anything wrong with him? Because his numbers were somewhat pedestrian compared to that. But this is what the young man can do. He wears on people and he finishes drives. And it's just a different approach now, schematically, right, right, right. that, quite frankly, Lincoln Riley is finding how, out how to use the guys he has at running back. Oklahoma snapped it 71 times. 49 snaps have been rushes today.
ESPN's College Football on ABC, presented by K Jewelers, who would like to remind you that right now it's engagement season. Buick, proud partner of the NCAA, and Pacific Life. For life insurance, annuities, and investments, choose Pacific Life, the power to help you succeed. Feels like fall here in Norman, Oklahoma, as we uh, dove into the second half of the college football season. Nobody's in the library right now <laughs> here on Beautiful the campus. Library. Whoa! That takes some guts right there. Looks like our strength. producer and director on it after the game. That's why. That's what they do. This yeah. is what they're going to do. I think I've seen it before. P. Ryan, four touchdowns. Had that big five touchdown four in a 27 yard game against Kansas last year, setting the FBS record a week after Melvin Gordon had busted LT's record. It belongs to P. Ryan now. He's got four scores, and we've got roll flow in the studio. Robert. All right, Adam, uh, when last we left, Tennessee had taken the lead, but Alabama marched right down the field. Derrick Henry ends up being the game winning touchdown. He has now rushed for touchdown in 13 straight games. T coming up. Here on ABC, 8 o'clock Eastern, number one Ohio State and Ezekiel Elliott on the road against Rutgers. Now talking about big time running backs, Ezekiel Elliott, certainly one of them. And throughout the season, he's still been the constant. Regardless of who's been the quarterback at Ohio State, whether it's been Jones and now JT Barrett get the start tonight for the first time this year. Elliott's been a constant back there. Pressure, down he goes. Eric Stryker in on it. Along with big number 97, Charles Walker. Stryker is that linchpin defensively for Mike Stoops. He gives him so much versatility. Is he a linebacker or is he an edge rusher? Mahomes plenty of time, all day to throw. And the release to the outside for Davis in front of Austin, who grabs him before he can get the first down. Tell you what, Dakota Austin is getting baptized today, isn't he? He's had a yep. lot of action. Zach Sanchez went down early in this game, and they're already missing Marcus Green as well at that quarterback position. And Dakota Austin is getting some good work. Third down one. Keep it on the ground here, and a stumbling Washington is able to hold on to it. Keep his feet enough to grab the first down, running into Shannon. Texas Tech going forward. They're going to have Oklahoma State at home next week. That's about a 50-50 shot in terms of what the FPI predicts that game to look like, both teams, at least coming into this year. That ball deflected out of the hand of Mahomes, and Alexander dives to it to try to pick it up. He's got the interception. It was deflected by D.J. Ward, tomahawking the right arm of Patrick Mahomes to float that ball and flutter it into the air for Alexander. And Ward was running the edge on the backside right there. The hand just as the ball is going forward. Very good job by Ward finding the football, even if you don't get to the quarterback. The fourth interception grabbed by the Oklahoma defense today. All sooner, seven to play here in Norman. Welcome back to ESPN College Football on ABC, presented by K Jewelers. Four picks today for the Oklahoma defense. The latest from Dominique Alexander, Adam Amin, Kelly Stauffer, Olivia Harlan. From Norman, Oklahoma, and it looks like Baker Mayfield's day is done. Cliff Kingsbury's former quarterback with a 211-yard passing performance, and it is Trevor Knight into the ball game, giving to Alex Ross with his eighth carry of the season for the redshirt junior. Trevor Knight appearing in a game for the 21st time in his career. Started 15 games in his career, over 3,000 yards passing. MVP of the Sugar Bowl after the 2013 season when Oklahoma had that big win against Alabama. Started the first nine games last year before he got hurt. Didn't play against Texas Tech last season. Returned for that bowl game against Clemson, that brutal loss by Oklahoma to the Tigers. But he got beat out by Mayfield in the preseason for the starting job, but 
night in the game for the final six minutes plus. There's Ross again, close to the sticks. Trevor Knight, the MVP of that Sugar Bowl. Alabama got knocked out by Auburn in the uh, de facto SEC title game or SEC West title game in that kick six game. So a lot of people thought that they were dragging a little bit going into this bowl game. But Trevor Knight, if Alabama was dragging, he took full advantage with four touchdowns and 348 through the air. One of the mo sharpest, most efficient performances I've seen out of a quarterback. Yeah. I mean, Trevor Knight was unreal, and it really elevated the expectations going into 2014, I think, in a level that they actually weren't really ready to ascend to, to be quite honest with you, and they kind of fell off in 2014. Knight keeps it first down. Uh, both these teams had disappointing seasons last year. Obviously, Texas Tech's first year with Cliff Kingsbury was so good. They went 8-5, they won a bowl game, and granted, they had a hot start to that year and a cold finish, but last season, a lot of injuries for Tech. They go 4-8. and eight. Oklahoma, which had won 10 straight games, or 10 games or more in four straight years, they end up going just 8-5 and five after they got off to a really good start last season as well. There's a lot of disappointment in these two programs at the end of last season. You got the feeling that they both felt that they could bounce back. When you talk to the coaching staffs, both felt like this year could be a much bigger year for both. Ross stacked up by Jenkins. Allen trying to rip it away. Second down coming up. Well, and Adam, the way that 2014 ended is exactly what ushered in changes on the offensive side with Bob Stoops. You know, he talked about it. He kind of took credit for the air raid stuff hitting the table with sure. Mike Leach, hired him here after he took the head job. And he said, you know, it was it permeates college football, but I wasn't really benefiting from that. And so he goes in and finds a guy in Lincoln Riley who's in that lineage and says, you know what, I want to start doing this offensively again. But I think right now Lincoln Riley's trying to find the blend between the physical run game that we saw here today and also the air raid concepts that really are difficult to defend in the pass game. This offense wasn't that good against Tennessee. They won that game, but they got up to a very slow start that game. They were not very good against Texas. No. And Bob Stoops was quick to point that out. Because we asked him, is Lincoln Riley doing the things that you kind of expected when you brought him in? He said, well, let me first say, we got wins, but we struggled. Yeah. It was inconsistent against Texas and Tennessee. And consistency, I'm sure, like every coach in college football, the key word is consistency. In yeah, and that's game. what he said, inconsistent. I love what he's doing, but we're inconsistent. Well, what's inconsistent about it primarily was what was happening on the line of scrimmage with three young players. And I think as those players are getting ramped up, I think this offense is fixing to launch. And down the stretch, I think Lincoln Riley is going to have a lot of weapons at his, in his hands. Final Oklahoma timeout. We'll step aside as well. Back in Norman, 3.43 to play here in the fourth. Cliff Kingsbury looks on as his Red Raiders have not scored 30 points just yet. They've scored 30 in every other game. Oklahoma on offense. On third down and eight. And it's Knight keeping it. He's got Mead in front of him for a block and a first down inside the 15-yard line. You get the sense with Cliff Kingsbury there's a lot to be said about Kingsbury. He's, you know, got the big money contract this year, three million bucks annually, going up even further than that as the years go on. He's got the quote unquote pretty boy image. He's a young guy, the youngest head coach in the Power Five at 36 years of age. You get the sense from this guy that he's a little bit hardened because there's been a great article written about him in Sports Illustrated about how he was cut from his JV team by his dad. He has gone through a lot in his life already drafted in the NFL in the sixth round by the Patriots and did not have a flourishing NFL career like many expected him to have. So Ross takes it inside the 10-yard line, and he calls himself at times a failure in those regards. His mother passed away 10 years ago. He had to go back into coaching and try to work his way up in the field. You get the sense he wants to be more than just whatever the image is that has been placed out there for a young coach like that. You get the sense that he wants to be more than just the money and the looks and the image. Yeah, I think it's a quest to be successful, quite honestly. He was as a college player, obviously, and a lot of other things that you've documented is 
played out in his life, but it's about being successful now. And I think he has the ability to do that. There isn't any doubt about it. But he coaches with a chip on his shoulder. There isn't any question. First career touchdown, Alex Ross. A season high for Oklahoma in points and rushing and rushing touchdowns continues to build up. And what Cliff Kingsbury is trying to do is get the defensive side of the ball to match what he knows he can accomplish on the offensive side of the ball. And that's where David Gibb comes in. There's been a lot of defensive coordinators and schemes coming and going at Texas Tech. And as the head man, you realize you have to settle on someone that you believe in and give them time to do it. Alex Ross, first career scorer for the Redshirt Junior out of Jenks, Oklahoma. Okay, we're talking about Kingsbury as Texas travel starts at uh, a high school in Texas where he was a unicorn in high school. He was very good and obviously makes his way to Lubbock, Texas. One of the most prolific passers in history in Texas Tech. Is a Houston assistant coach, has Case Keenum there, gets the shot to go, work under Kevin Sumlin, has Johnny Manziel as the quarterback, and then slides over to Texas Tech as the new head coach. And there is some arrogance there, at least based on what people would say about him, based on how he talks, the way he carries himself. There's confidence there, though, as well. And I think that's what has carried over into the program two out of the last three years is people in Lubbock believe that they can win again, and they have been winning two of the last three years. And he's well on his way to doing that. There isn't any question, I think, that he can get there. It's just that now as the CEO of the program, both sides of the ball have to be married together. Mike Leach got it done, won nine games his last three years in Lubbock, but they weren't playing great defense. Right. And in today's college football, you can't outscore everybody. You have to play defense. Shot of the 15-yard line. It's Tony Brown. Chopped down. Still the big headline today was Baker Mayfield, a former Texas Tech walk-on quarterback, trying to keep his emotions in check, trying to play strong today. Yeah, his biggest opponent today was himself, making sure that he was locked and loaded, didn't get overly emotional like I believe he did to start the Texas game. He's an Austin kid. And outside of one pretty bad decision with the INT he had, he's actually played really well and composed is is the word I would use for him today. Well, starting quarterbacks are done. Davis Webb, who split time with Mayfield a couple of years ago, and split time last year as well as the starter. He is into the game. Stockton on the run. Closing the book on what Baker Mayfield did for six games. Solid numbers, but again, a lot of the reason for this is the fact that the rushing attack was so darn good for Oklahoma today. Yeah, that one interception at the bottom really is the only thing that there's a hang up on. Right. I mean, he was pretty efficient otherwise. Remember, he had the run game to go with it, so he doesn't need those astronomical numbers. Cam Batson on the screen pass, taking it out wide. Inside of two to play. And I think that's what Mayfield's going to have to do down the road is realize that my defense is playing pretty well. We may be able to run the ball very efficiently also. So I need to be a good decision maker and distribute to the people in space that can make plays. That's his calling card going forward. Webb, the junior out of Prosper, Texas, in a game for the fifth time this year. Back to Batson. Frustrating day for Patrick Mahomes. Had three interceptions all season, or six interceptions rather, all season coming in. Four interceptions today alone. But this is still a guy that, I mean, you see the flashes of what this guy can do and how effective and explosive he can be at the forefront of this offense. Yeah, and like we talked about, a lot of his big plays come off script, which I think Cliff Kingsbury and Eric Morris are still trying to find a way to manage. Make sure those plays are coming within the confines of what we're doing schematically. And they're still managing that. But the interceptions today, he made a couple of bad decisions. But it was also good coverage on probably two, if not maybe three of those interceptions, as Kingsbury pointed out. 
Going over Stockton, he's got the first down. Stop the clock at 123 to reset the change. Everything is looking ahead to November in this conference. Bob Stoops, when you ask him, hey, are you guys a playoff team right now? He's like, yeah, that's for you guys to decide, and that's for everybody else in the media to talk about, and certainly we will, and we'll jam it down your throat for the next couple of weeks until those first college football playoff rankings come out on November the 3rd. But that's when things start to get a little bit real. You know, when, the, when those first rankings come out, now we start to set the barometer. And then the rest Have of the month, fun. the rest of the month might belong to the Big 12 because everybody plays everybody among these four teams. TCU, Baylor, Oklahoma State, Oklahoma. And you said it, Cal. TCU, Baylor, Oklahoma all going to Stillwater this season. That is going to be entertaining. There isn't any question about it. And as far as being a playoff team now, I don't think a playoff team exists yet sure because the snapshot yeah. in time changes so quickly from week to week and that's the beauty of what we do we get to document that but the college football playoff picture changes literally from one week to the next Texas Tech will be back in Lubbock next week for Halloween Saturday when Oklahoma State comes to town. Then they got West Virginia on the road, K-State, a bye week, and then they go to Austin, Baker Mayfield's hometown, to play the Texas Longhorns on Thanksgiving. Oklahoma on the road at Kansas next week, then Iowa State, then they get the bye, and that's when they set up for the long push in November. But Oklahoma, with its sixth win of the season, they moved to 3-1 in the Big 12, the season-high 63 points. Four hundred plus rushing yards for Oklahoma on offense. Seven rushing touchdowns as well. P. Ryan over two hundred yards. Mixon over one hundred and fifty. Impressive effort today by the Sooners. Texas Tech falls to two and three in the Big Twelve. Oklahoma to three and one in Big Twelve play. Great job by our fantastic crew here in Norman, Oklahoma, for Olivia Harlan, Kelly Starr, for the fantastic women and men here in Norman. Adam Amin saying so long from Memorial Stadium, 8 o'clock Eastern time on ABC, number one Ohio State, taking on Rutgers. Final score here, 63-27, Sooners. Pick it up.